get set. We're riding on the Clueless. internet, cyberspace, set free. Hello, virtual reality. Interactive appetite, searching for a website, a window to the world, got to get online. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the Clueless. internet. Hello, and welcome to the Clueless Internet Podcast, episode 20. I am your new narrator, Howard. Alex is gone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you really didn't tie this very tight, Howard. Alex, it's a conspiracy. Oh, sh- 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 yeah. Jesus. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. <laughs> mm. Um, mm. Te- I mean, no, technically, <laughs> you could you could say uh, it is a story for another time. Uh, so, what are we here for today, Howard? We're here for some. We're here for some, some conspiracies. Some conspiracies. So, yes, I've I've gathered. Um, there's a few here that I I didn't know about, but I've generally gathered some of my favourite ones. Um, so hopefully they're not the same conspiracies you'll have heard covered over and over again in other people's. I've heard podcasts. so many conspiracies; they sort of blend into one <laughs> after a while. They all they all either end up in somebody being a lizard man or the. Towers not going down for jet fuel for liz- reasons. Liz- for lizard fuel reasons. <laughs> lizard fuel. Um, so- lizard fuel can't melt steel beams, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> God, how did I not know that? I mean, G fuel can't melt. Wait. <laughs> G fuel can melt steel beams. Trust me. Um, I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> successfully. Um, oh. Just a few questions before we start. It's, are the stories that we're talking about today going to be like, will make us put on some sort of list? Ye- Yes. Good. Um, second, will MI5 be busting through that very door as soon as we start speaking? It's not a very hard door to bust through, to be fair. <laughs> I think I could take a good run. No, yeah, I could probably do that. <laughs> okay. Um, so hopefully not, because they'll hopefully. definitely get in. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I have left it unlocked. Um, oh. <laughs> so, okay. Just for Neelix, he'll let himself in. That's all my questions answered. <laughs> Shall we get into it? No. Oh. <laughs> um, I've I've named this, but it's not really. Uh, today I learned in conspiracies. I should actually lock that door now. I'll freak myself. I probably out. should. I'll get the keys. <laughs> <laughs> Can we leave that in? <laughs> Sit down and shut, shut, shut up. Today. Where's my lukewarm water? For my bum. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Podcast time. <laughs> Here it is. Let me just... Well, I'm glad I didn't cut any of this out of the podcast and you're all here to, <laughs> you were all here to hear that. <laughs> so, we're going to start. Our first section. What was it? Today I learned in conspiracies. Today I learned in conspiracies because there are a few that I learned about. Okay. But they're... The first one I I knew about years ago. I've emptied my mind. I'm like an empty glass. I am ready to be... Alex, where did you go? Filled. <laughs> <laughs> With conspiracy knowledge. With conspiracy knowledge. Conspiracy knowledge. Conspiracy knowledge. That's what they say. That's what they always say. Oh, God. Then I'll have the walk of shame home. <laughs> <laughs> the walk of pride. The walk of knowledge. Conspiracy knowledge. Useful knowledge. So our, our first... Uh, story or conspiracy i suppose uh, is titled the phantom time hypothesis the fan- the um, the phantom time hypothesis yeah, there's going to be a running theme of eh, not a running theme but there are going to be a few time based is casper involved in this one cuz i'm th- phantom time you mean ghost time ghost time hypothesis it's actually ghost time no. ghost time phantom. Uh, um no more of a phantom as in something that uh I, what is a phantom now a it scary... tends to be like a shadowy figure, but not so much a ghost. Oh, like the Michael Jackson one where he sort of went across the... Uh, I don't know if you remember this, that doorway when somebody recorded essentially Michael Jackson's ghost walking across some sort of hallway and it was all... Moonwalking across Yeah, just like going back as he... <laughs> knew it was him just uh, it, I, he's not even in America it's just somewhere just, in India that's just something <laughs> what was that sorry um no so uh, if you wanted to uh, uh, translate it i suppose the best better name would be the hidden time hypothesis oh, okay um, okay 
like so, when you look at the clock and it's six o'clock and then you look away for like three <laughs> seconds and then it's eight. That's just you. <laughs> <laughs> I blacked out. Uh, so the basis of the hypothesis, yes, or hypothesis, is um, the scarcity of archaeological evidence that can be reliably dated to the period AD six fourteen to nine eleven. Oh, to the, oh my! <laughs> to the nine eleven. It's already oh. starting. <laughs> just got, I told you the towers were coming into this. <laughs> Fuck. Um, so it's just a chunk of time where they just can't find anything. Well, this is what someone's put forth. So the, they've put forth that there, there is a, their their hypothesis or their conspiracy is that this, there's a scarcity of archaeological evidence that can be reliably dated between six fourteen and nine eleven, um, and the perceived inadequacies of radiometric and dendrochronical no den dendrochronological methods of dating uh, which uh, for English, this period. Which in English means... Oh, I assume it's... Uh, <laughs> Time. Dendrochronological. I, I imagine it's something like carbon dating. Um, uh, they, they can date carbon, apparently. It's, it's an estimate, but you can you can take like a fossil and go, it came from this date because we've tested the soils. Oh, and... I thought you were going to say you can date <laughs> it to like with a spoons or something for a nice it, date. It's more of an art because you're essentially assigning... Um, something based on the sediments that we've kind of analysed certain layers of time to be throughout the like. So when you've seen oh right, so it's like a tree with its rings. Yeah, so you can kind of say, well, it probably came from this period because it contains a lot of the same materials that were found in the ground during uh, that time right. period okay, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's sort of like a layered cake when you think about. It. I mean, when you think about it, like the, the layer cake, like the the crust, the crust of the earth is is just sort of like a layer cake, and the lower you go, you'll sort of see the next layer, like this. All the things that died, yeah, in that uh, generation, kind of thing. It's where the bones go. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah. You can kind of imagine it as just like a, a constant like uh, conveyor belt of like life and death. <laughs> yeah, like imagine like a mall that's been sort of submerged in dirt and then you just go, oh, that game used to exist 1985. 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so like, but like, yeah, so you imagine a mall and then like in the 90s they filled in the bottom half with dirt, but then the top half still functioned normally and no yeah. one really gave a shit about the bottom half. And then all of a sudden you're like, That'll oh shit, Blockbuster down. was down here. And then they build another mall on top of that. And then they build another mall on top of that and then you just sort of the go down and you're like... Story of America. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mall on malls. Mall malls, please. Mauling malls, malls. On malls. Uh, also, the presence of Roman-esque architecture in the, uh, in the 10th century Western Europe, suggesting that the Roman era was not as long ago as conventionally thought. So when did they think it was originally? Uh, so if they're saying, what's that, 614 to 911, that's oh, in the 10th about century. 300 years. So they would, they would basically be saying that the Roman Empire was probably 300 years closer to our time. Than we think it was. Oh right. Essentially, um, also the relation between the Julian calendar, the Gregorian calendar, and the underlying astronomical solar or tropical year, the Julian calendar introduced by Julius Caesar, was long known to introduce a discrepancy from the tropical years around one day for each century that was the calendar was in use. So you've heard about this before, where they've had to. It's like why we still have daylight savings and stuff today, because I think what are we following now. Um, we're not following the Julius Caesar calendar anymore. Uh, no, it was like, I can't remember what the the current one is. Um, can't remember. Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, Friday, happy days, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> 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 um, but essentially, yeah. So all, every calendar we've ever created has created discrepancies where it's like, oh no, now the stars are out of line because it's not technically you can't you know, trying to measure an exact. Um, because obviously when we talk about time and the way we measure it, it's measured in uh, distance and actual... And like, it's relative. It's and... it's space-time, essentially. So like to, to figure out where you are on a planet, how fast that's moving and how many times you've gone... To figure all that out back in those days was incredibly hard. So the calendars have got better, but even now we still have And I issues. fucking struggle today, <laughs> to be honest. I just eventually just look outside and go, oh, it's dark, it's probably past seven now. And then usually it's about fucking two o'clock in the morning i'm, I'm brilliant brilliant <laughs> thank you julius caesar you well 
That was when they were using the Julian. Uh, by the time the Gregorian calendar was introduced uh, in AD 1582, Illig alleges that the old Julian calendar should have produced a discrepancy of 13 days between it um, and the real or tropical calendar. Instead, the astronomers and mathematicians working for Pope Gregory the XIII had found that the realist <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> had found that the civil calendar needed to be adjusted by only 10 days. The Julian calendar day Thursday the 4th of October 1582 was followed by the first day of the Gregorian calendar, Friday the 5th, 15th of October. So they missed oh, out God, like a, a Jesus, week. If they were gone two days early. <laughs> so they missed out like a week, essentially. Um, from How did this... you start in your calendar on th- Friday the 13th? Bad it... start, bad start. <laughs> uh, it's Thursday 1582. What do you mean Thursday? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like... <laughs> it's one of the Thursdays of 1582. I personally think we should come up with new names for the for the days. Like uh, I think Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's a bit it's a bit droll now. I think we should come up with like cooler names. Like instead of Monday, we should have like Yagrach or something like <laughs> something fucking cool. So when aliens come to the planet for the first time, hopefully we're going to talk about aliens because aliens are my wait doesn't conspiracy. Wouldn't Yagrach be exactly the same as Monday to them? They're all they're all foreign uh, words. To them. I mean, <laughs> I suppose so. But like, it I depends said, just, on what sounds cool in their language. Like, a glad crack might mean um, floppy dil- dildo tits. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, hmm, that doesn't sound like a great Happy day. Happy floppy dildo tits. <laughs> I think that could be a good name for Monday, actually, because Mondays do feel like <laughs> big old floppy dildo tits. Um, from this, Illig concludes that the AD era had counted roughly three centuries, which had never existed. Oh right. So there. So that, the three. <laughs> so they had three hundred years. Called but, fucking um, overcounting. Jesus Christ. So that's 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 what the basis was. Basically, that um, in three main points: um, a scarcity of archaeological evidence, uh, the presence of Roman architecture later than it should have been, um, and massive discrepancies in the Julian and Gregorian calendar. Essentially, there were three hundred years that never existed. Essentially. Um, okay. <clears throat> so uh, this so, is. So they uh, just skipped it, or that it just. Well, missed it out or the, you get into that i was gonna say so now uh, we go to an article from katie serena uh published in october 2017 but updated uh august 2020 to actually be in 1873 <laughs> because we'd lost all those years uh yes so updated august 1863 <laughs> um According to the phantom time hypothesis, Charlemagne never existed, along with 297 years that were just made up. Fucking hell, sounds like Scientology. <laughs> uh, Heribert Illig is the creator of the phantom time hypothesis, so that's what, who I was referencing when I said Illig. Yeah. In a world where every idea seems divisive, it can help to know that there are at least a few things that the world as a whole agrees on. Uh, time, the calendar, and the basic idea. And that, that Dragon Ball Z is pretty fucking cool. Dragon Ball Z is the totes the best. Totes the best was created in 1873. Now, um, by Akira Toriyama, the samurai warrior. Yeah, the samurai warrior space man. Because time is fucked. The, <laughs> we're only one story in, and my whole understanding of time has broken and i'm 300 years too early for today's podcast (laughs) (laughs) we're getting ahead of ourselves we're getting ahead of ourselves uh oh is it 300 years late yeah because yeah oh fuck no early ah Uh, no yeah we're 300 years early you're welcome we're Uh, doing god God, god's work here well god doesn't exist because it's 300 years too early so basically the history uh, happened pretty much how the historians say it did Okay, okay. Oh, so just a few of those things that we tend to rely on. Uh, like time. F- to stop our ma- brains from melting. After all, at least, uh, uh, at the very least, we can all agree that the year is 2020. Okay, thank fuck. But that's where you're wrong. Fuck. <laughs> According to German historian Herbert Illig, the year is actually 1723. The Gregorian calendar is a lie, and a chunk of the Middle Ages was completely made up. Uh, Even the cool parts? Yes, all the best bits. Completely. Fine. Well, actually, um, the Middle Ages is kind of, kind of a dip um, in eventful, like things uh, happening in history. It was kind of. Oh no, that was the Dark Ages. It Sorry. wasn't the best. Middle Ages weren't. No, Middle Ages were all right. It was the Dark Ages that were a bit of a pit. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Middle Ages people. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we offended you. You can write into us at podcast at cluelessinter.net if you uh, really want to air your grievances about our uh, Middle Ages a uh, fuckery. 
Don't you tell me about the Middle Ages. But we've just I traveled was back there. in time. We are there now. <laughs> no, get away from my corn. Oh, Howard, what you're telling me now is I can still be a cowboy and it will be cool because everyone will be a cowboy. Were the cowboys I... in the 1700s? The cowboys were in There would have been cowboys in 1700s, wouldn't there? No. There are now. <laughs> well, all you had to do was rustle some cattle, I suppose, I suppose and get it across. I could probably Arizona find land. one like, somewhere and get a hat. It doesn't have to be a cowboy hat. <laughs> you I don't can... have to get a hat from a cowboy for it to be a cowboy hat. You can just wear a Stetson. <laughs> I can. I could just wear a hat and just say it's a cowboy hat because technically it's 1700s cowboy hat. I am the 1700s cowboy. Exactly. Here is my Fiat uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and my Nikes. You can, tell, you can tell it's a cow because I've drawn the, the black and white spots on it and I've also put a lasso around it that's <laughs> attached to my... Hip chain. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do when I get in my car. <laughs> Just filling up the cow. Just filling up the cow. It's not oh, always well. talk about your wife. It would be... <laughs> <laughs> no, this man is not crazy, at least not officially. And he actually claims to have archaeological evidence to support his case. In 1991, Illig proposed his theory, aptly called the Phantom Time Hypothesis. <laughs> he claims there was a conspiracy entered into back in 1000 AD to change the dating system by three world rulers. Oh, so that's why it's 300 years. Each of them wanted 100 years for themselves. They were like, no, I want to skip 100 years. No, I want to skip 100 years. No, I want... Okay, well, it was, we'll it was also 300 then. It, it was the idea that people wanted to, uh, as well, that they wanted to be close. So there's, um, uh, it claims that Pope Sylvester II, Holy Roman Emperor Otto III, and Byzantine Emperor Constantine. So Byzantine Emperor, uh, I think the Byzantine was after the Romans. With, okay. I can't remember. <laughs> so it was after the 10th century. Oh, no, Emperor Constantine. So, yeah, so uh, Otto Constantine. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I've, I've got myself all confused. <laughs> uh, they all got together and changed the calendar to make it seem as if Otto had begun his reign in the millennial year of 1000 AD rather than 996. Imagine having such big dick energy that you just changed the date so that it seemed like you ruled for... I've been ruling for 300 years. Well, it's... it's it's that I think he just wanted to at the beginning of his rule to land on a nice. It, it was a marketing thing essentially. It's like I, I was the ruler of, of one thousand AD. He wanted it. To, he didn't want to be the ruler in, in nine ninety six. That's no good. Fuck me. Imagine if you just like sort of you you're working away in 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 the ten thousands. You've got you've got to Friday and you're like oh. Great, like t tomorrow's Saturday. I'm gonna have gonna have a gonna have a day off, and then all of a sudden the whole fucking calendar changes, and it's Monday again. Well, he uh, he specifically wanted 1000, or in this conspiracy, he specifically wanted 1000 AD uh, because it sounded more meaningful. <laughs> Just <laughs> you know, it wouldn't surprise me if Trump tried to do this. I want 2300. And I feel like it would just make me a bigger boy and my hands would be bigger. And I'm trying to figure out every insult that I can. <laughs> and my wig would be down firmer if it was 2,300. Can we get that done, please? So we're in Trump 2020, 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Joel 3030. I mean, Joe Biden's in the future. <laughs> Joel 3030. <laughs> Um, Illig further claims that the trio altered uh, existing documents and created fraudulent historical claims and uh, and people in order to back themselves just, up. Just, just fake just, people. Uh, Bob, Ted, this Frank, is my friend Larry, Sandy, uh, Alice. That's a cardboard That's a box. <laughs> Uh, Don't talk to Alice like that. How dare you? You know she's uh, sensitive about her appearance, about her edges. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she hates her silhouette. <laughs> gosh, it's so boxy. <laughs> um, oh no, shit, I missed a joke. She's so boxy. <laughs> oh, Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> uh, he claims that Holy Roman Emperor Charlemagne uh, was not in fact God. a real ruler, but simply a King Arthur type legend. I thought you were going to say a king arsehole. A king arsehole type legend. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the kind I like. My favourite kind of legend. Love me a big king arsehole. Oh. Mm. <laughs> he explains that through all of his tampering and forgery, uh, an extra 297 years were added to history. <laughs> 
I like how he just comes up with that number. Like, what the fuck? You know, we added four. We might as well add an extra 290. Yeah, we did kind of go from four years to 297. Like, just out of nowhere. What the... it's, um, oh, and Charlemagne. Totally fake. You know, it's just like ordering from McDonald's. That would be £4.79. Here you go. Here's three grand. Might as well make it even. <laughs> well, it's just, here you go. Here's ten pence. He, this guy flexes <laughs> so fucking hard. This is big dick energy. I'm telling you, Howard. This is fucking amazing. I want to uh, do that officially. I'm going to walk into work on Monday and go, sorry, I thought it was the year 2537. What do you mean it's not last Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. God. <laughs> um, so yeah, so 297 years that didn't actually happen. Uh, Illig says that the inadequate system of dating medieval artifacts, as well as an over-reliance on written history, are to blame. <laughs> I can't see where we got that from. What are you doing reading what that thing that that guy wrote down 200 years ago? He didn't exist! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get his point. It's like, yeah, technically, when you say it that way, anyone could have written that. It's the whole thing like of William Shakespeare. Is William Shakespeare really William Shakespeare? Or was he the Earl of some whatever? Or uh, <sighs> Everyone always said Shakespeare, or everyone always assumes Shakespeare was uh, too uneducated to have written... His sonnets plays. and plays and stuff, but... Clearly somebody was smart enough. So, I mean, yeah, right, maybe someone else wrote it, but they probably still did it in this year. <laughs> I mean, yeah, for him to take the credit, but then, oh, God, I suppose. But then 300 years, it's kind of hard to cover up that much shit. I mean, imagine, It's a lot of stuff to create. Imagine you go into work, like, you get in at 9 o'clock, you skip about seven hours, you get to, like, four, and then they go, where's this left seven hours worth of work gone? It, it it's all here, just blank blank pages, blank work, blank shelves, blank this, blank that, blank blank. The funny thing is, the time, um, the amount of time it would take to create about three hundred years worth of evidence would take mm, about three hundred years. years. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, for the be- oh, they probably crammed it into those last three years, you know what I mean? We've got four days, go! <laughs> 300 years worth, come on! Here's this guy, um, Shamala Gang. Uh, <laughs> uh, better, we can do with it. Shamil again! We made it. <laughs> Shamal Bane? Fuck, you know. Um, according to his research, the years between 614 and 911 AD don't quite add up. The years prior to 614 were full of historically significant as- events as were the years after 9-11. I really <laughs> I wish mean, he had yeah. picked, like, 9-12. <laughs> I mean, Just come how, on. How was he to know? Uh, to be fair, he I could suppose he did just, propose he... this in 1991. He can see the future. <laughs> <laughs> just push the towers over just a little bit further. <laughs> a little bit to the right. Oh, God, and fuck. then you wouldn't ruin this episode. <laughs> God, it's not the butterfly effect. Uh... Blah, 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 blah. Uh, however, he claims that the ones in between were unusually dull. I mean, yeah, nothing I mean, that happened. When, nothing happened on that Friday. Yeah, nothing happened on that 300-year-old <laughs> Friday. What about the 586 million other Fridays in that time? <laughs> Just, yeah, nothing happened. Uh, Saturday. Shakespeare <laughs> so, did summer. He wrote something. Uh, but it probably wasn't a, him. A, a play, Mc, <laughs> Macbeth or some shit. McFly. Oh God, he, he uh, emailed it to. I mean, <laughs> mailed it to me, and I, I, shit. <laughs> I, I tried to read it, but there was just there was so much other other shit going on, like oh, oh, over there. <laughs> just runs away from the. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he also points out that mathematical uh, mathematical discrepancies between the Julian and Gregorian calendars further complicates things. The Julian calendar says that a full year is 365.25 days long. Whereas that's the, how I think of it. Exactly 20, 0.25. 0.25, oh, because that's how we get the leap year. Yeah. Uh, whereas the Gregorian calendar, the one we use now, oh, it is the one we use now, uh, says it's actually 11 minutes shorter than that. Oh, well, fuck me. In what will face. I do with that extra 11 minutes that I've just so wait, lost? That's probably what, 11 point, uh, 365.245? I could have watched <laughs> half a Dragon Ball episode <laughs> in, that, in that time. Uh, All that time lost. All... Get out of here, Illig. God, Illig. I keep wanting to say Skellig, which is a character from an old book I read years ago. <laughs> I mean, furthermore, he Illig. He may be a skeleton now. <laughs> So, furthermore, Skellig. Uh, no, um, no, he's alive. There are pictures and shit. Nico Bellig. Um, and he's still 
I think he's still reporting this, so he still believes in this. That's what you think, Howard, but he's actually skipped 35 years. He's actually seven. Got it. <laughs> well, then I don't have to listen to anything he says. Because <laughs> kids are stupid. Agreed. But how do you know the kids, Howard? They could have just skipped 37. They could be 85. They could be 187 for all you know. They could be Benjamin Button in it. Jesus Christ. We're one, epi- we're one story and I'm already questioning reality. I love this. I love this episode. Riala who? Never met her. <laughs> uh, uh, Furthermore, Illy claims that the Roman architecture in the 10th century Western Europe is too modern for that time period uh, in which it was supposedly built. It had smart TVs. Um, why is there... Uh, there's LEDs in here. There's, what? <laughs> well, that's a sick gaming rig from 1783. God damn. Uh, dilly, dilly. Oh yeah. Though he, though his phantom time hypothesis seems far fetched, Illig has actually managed to find some supporters. I mean, I'm sure he has. I mean, well, the thing is, I, I don't think everything he's saying is completely insane. Like the idea of people making up events and things like that. Oh god, people lying—that is never out of people the realm lying. of possibility. It's, it's insanity. <laughs> like, I mean, it, the thing is, whenever whenever I hear stuff about this, when it's always stuff about people not knowing something. Yeah. Um. Instead of like, you you have the conspiracies that are like the lizard people, or stuff like 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 nine eleven was an inside job, stuff like that. But when it when it's stories about people just forgetting shit and just like leaving stuff out, like the whole thing about the fact that the human race was already here years and years and years before we thought, and then that it got theory, buried and stuff like that. That theory I didn't want to do just because it's so prevalent at the moment with Graham Hancock and Joe Rogan and everyone. I've, I thought uh, if if anyone said it, they've probably already heard this. Like, so just, I did. This was kind of my way of going into that territory without going down that. Rabbit hole. <laughs> Stuff like that. Of just Gebekli Tepe and... The uh, buried rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> just stuff like that. It, it always makes... I, I always automatically just sort of go, yeah, that's probably right. Because even today, 2020, we can't get a news story right from one article to the next. Yeah. So how do you think we're going to get something from hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years right? Oh, I yeah. just assume everything from back then is just, you know, people found shit on papers and just went, yeah, no, this yeah. seems I mean, right. I, I'm a massive proponent of like science and stuff but at the same time i don't think there's enough evidence uh for example saying that there weren't a race of giants in the past exactly yeah. Uh, if, if anything the evidence kind of points towards there being larger uh if not um homo sapiens then a previous version of ourselves being much larger and uh essentially being much stronger and being able to do uh, there was a good episode of something I watched recently where they talk about how a lot of these places actually got these like smooth, perfectly cut rocks and stuff. And it's like technically they were using te- uh, methods that we have today. Um, uh, essentially, um, they just found uh, essentially the right chemical uh, component and they passed that information on. You can kind of see it all the way around the world, all this sort of stuff. So like the whole Graham Hancock idea of a much earlier civilization, maybe Atlantis or whatever, um, hopefully all that kind of stuff like there's there's technically not enough evidence ruling that out but at the same time there's nowhere near enough evidence rule uh, to say ruling it in. yeah um but i do find all that stuff fascinating and i think there's a, a massive possibility that he might be right about some of these like certain things like certain events like maybe certain things didn't happen maybe there were like points where like it was halfway through a decade and someone was like i'd rather rule at the turn of the decade. So I'm going to push that two years forward. Maybe every now and again An there were little things maybe. like that. And maybe it was just 300, yeah. We'll just tack another 285 <laughs> on there just for good measure. Um, so, yeah, so I don't think everything's completely uh, out because I like to hear they're like, though this phantom hypothesis seems far fetched, it doesn't. It, it just seems the amount of time he's proposing and the yeah. giant leap he made to 300 years. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I can understand maybe pushing four years just like, you know, yeah. fucking those off. Like those four initi- years initially that he put forward, I could say that's a perfectly acceptable kind of theory. But that would be boring <laughs> of a theory. Yeah, if, if you're a ruler, four years. if you're a ruler in the, and you're, you come to power in 996, and in those days you could be killed tomorrow 
tomorrow yeah to be replaced by someone else it's like no i want to rule in the year 1000 please exactly <laughs> i can do. imagine that yeah <laughs> you don't have any like cia <clears throat> operatives behind you making sure that your head's at the right angle at every moment of every day of every second yeah so essentially you've like, got a stick so this is dr hans ulrich Nimitz uh, published a paper in 1995 titled Did the Middle Ages Really Exist? Or Early Middle Ages Really Exist? In which he claims they did not. <laughs> Bold. I just like the way that was written. <laughs> oh, bold title, they did not. Uh, That's but, just a title. There's no other like explanation on the front cover. It's just they did not so that it yeah. makes you read on. That's quite enticing. And here's something I didn't know. that um, 1 AD is called Antiquity. So between Antiquity, 1 AD, and the Renaissance in 1500 AD, um... Historians count approximately 300 years, too many in their chronology, Nemitz wrote. wrote. Uh, in other words, the Roman Emperor Augustus really lived uh, 1,700 years ago instead of the conventionally assumed 2,000 years ago. Fuck. So they're closer, <clears throat> they're closer to us every day. <laughs> Some of Nemitz's claims echoed Illig's, such as the discrepancies between the Julian and Gregorian calendars and the lack of reliable historical sources. Though Nemitz did admit that a counter-argument could exist as the Byzantinium and Islamic regions were at war during that period, which was well documented. Most historians worldwide are critical of the phantom time hypothesis. Countless historians have chosen to argue having used recorded dates of solar eclipses in that time. Yeah. Uh, along with other documented histories from other parts. So when I said before, like he was kind of just saying, well, there's not enough there's not enough like documented history The historians basically turned around and went here's a bit of it there's a bit more oh there was an eclipse on there <laughs> <laughs> fucking asteroid <laughs> we've actually got a picture of this one <laughs> don't know how don't ask us <laughs> it's a really good drawing um, so yeah so in that time like so here we go to a, a, a clip it from another article uh, I thought you were about to say a clip from the time period here's a clip from 1482 <laughs> um, <laughs> it was actually 1142 uh, a clip from another article called Explaining Why the Phantom Hypothesis is, is All Wrong. Uh, while the theory is entertaining, nearly all medieval scholars view it as ridiculous. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> nearly all oh. medieval scholars. <laughs> I mean, of course you would say that. Do you know well, what I mean? This is one of the things I don't like, and I'm sure if you've listened to Graham Hancock, you kind of don't like about the institution. Of, They're all fucking buttonheads like, so many times. Yeah, it's like I love scientists like... Um, uh, Brian Cox, uh, Lawrence Krauss. Space, it's so big. Um, there's uh, a, a bunch of people, but at the same time, even um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, I'll say every now and again, they are so close-minded on, on certain topics, and I'm not like putting my tin foil hat it's on here. It's like their baby. It's, it, it is. It's, it's their baby. It's their reputation. I can understand why they've got things tied into it, but scientists have always said a good scientist is ready to throw out what their entire life's work because it's wrong. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are wrong. It just means that, oh, we know more. It's not, might not be wrong, but it's, it's, a, it's obsolete. Sorry. <laughs> throw it away. I mean, cause I can understand this, this guy like say, uh, no, it's redundant. I mean, like uh, we do graphic design. If somebody came in, to our workplace and just went you know graphic design just doesn't exist we probably got oh yes it does <laughs> it's not you don't need like people to work whole jobs why don't you just get this guy to draw it it's just some guy with no hands <laughs> go, I, do good. <laughs> I draw with my teeth this horse and it's just like a bookshelf <laughs> <laughs> he's signed um so yeah I don't, I don't like i don't like the kind of a hoity toitiness of, uh, of, of just immediately going, yeah, it's ridiculous, it's all stupid. It's like, uh, like at least stop and admit that there might be some um, truth to what he's saying. Yeah, all right, maybe his, his claims are completely wrong, but looking at it, you should be able to then go, actually, no, I think there might have been a few, maybe a few years here, maybe someone did this here. The idea that in 2,000 years, not one person with power decided to go, ha ha, twats. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> of course they did. I mean, we've got great evidence of that today. <laughs> <laughs> um, Phantom Time Hypothesis offers little explanation on why other civilizations such as China, Inda, in, Inda, India and Persia uh, would have also filled their pages with events and rulers that didn't exist. Someone would have had to well, all come together and agree on a, um, the Illuminati. a chosen history. Oh, shit. <laughs> They've been around You've blown forever. this case wide open, Alex. <laughs> the Earth is actually only 20 years old. We've all been in vats. That's my time. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. My book will be out next... Uh, uh, 2000 AD. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, so why the fuck would they have made all that shit up? Um, uh, it would um, even harder to explain would be the rise of the Islamic world and how it spread across the Middle East, Northern Africa, and into uh, Iberia. Uh, moreover, it seemed that Illig and his followers had little understanding of archaeology and dendrochronology again, um, which offers strong evidence that established dates are correct. In the end, the phantom time hypothesis is one of those interesting or crazy ideas that oh, will, yeah, to get that jab <laughs> in know, there, yeah. didn't you? Uh, that will always be with us, but with just a little bit of research can easily be explained. It's all wrong, completely a blanket statement. I've checked all 300 years <laughs> myself personally. This, this is one of the things I hate where people are so, um, so like... I'm in the right that I can't be wrong. It's like, you are completely fallible. Give me 10 minutes and a fucking baseball bat and I'll show you how fallible you are. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure at least 10 of our previous episodes has got to be something wrong in there like that's already been changed. Yeah. Um, but like the, the, th- the thing about that, what is the... Again, like I, I go really simplistic with this, but the, the reason that all these other nations and stuff have this history that was fake and stuff like that is probably because the nations who faked it told them that this happened and they went oh yeah i trust you that this yeah. happened yeah a lot of it will be uh word of mouth trust between trading nations warring nations like um, why would queen elizabeth lie to me about the fact that a man lived down the street two years ago who never lived there and <laughs> it was actually just like a dirt pile and but like oh god we all know about propaganda we all know uh too well in that some cases. People get far too easily drunk with power, and all this kind of stuff can happen. I have again many, many examples. Um, well, yeah. So this is uh, there's there's kind of a a thing that kind of runs through this episode where I I dislike people who are willing to just be like no and shut their mind off to something completely straight away. There's the Sagan standard. Is an aphorism which says that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Um, yeah, you can't just probably... claim that Autobots were actually a thing and just yeah. expect people to believe you. Well, it's one of my favourite statements. Uh, aphorism was made popular by astronomer, astronomer Carl Sagan, who's a little bit of a hero of mine, uh, through the 1980 TV show Cosmos, which I've told you before to watch. Why aren't yes. you watching it? Uh, now. <laughs> no, well, I, was talking, get it up now. I was talking to I the audience. I can ignore you, Howard, but for like the next Absolutely hour. load up all 10 episodes of Cosmos and watch right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, others have put forward uh, very similar ideas with different phrasing. Uh, Theodore Florolny in 1899 <laughs> uh, put forward the principle that the weight of evidence for, extra- for an extraordinary claim must be proportioned to its strangeness. So essentially, like the high, the level of strangeness requires the same level of scrupulous attention, essentially. Yeah. Um, and that comes from both sides. Uh, in 2004, the cyclist Lance Armstrong used the phrase, extraordinary allegations require extraordinary evidence. And then he got done for doping. <laughs> to discredit allegations of doping, put to him by journalist David Walsh, Armstrong was later asked, what is it about you that makes ordinary proof insufficient to bring you down? Because my fucking jack legs. An extraordinary claim could be quite easily proven with an ordinary claim, but sometimes... We are too stubborn. We're so entrenched in that. the way that we think currently. Yeah, so and it w- happens with everyone. So when he says it's that much harder to admit, that's what he means. It's like just as uh, as easy as we can dismiss it, it's just as hard to admit it kind of thing. So it, it, it's to kind of take everything with a... A grain of salt. A grain of salt and not to... Assign believe you, everything you see. Believe everything you see, but also not to deny uh, everything you can't see. Yeah. Essentially. Um, like, who knows? Bigfoot might be out there. The Loch Ness Monster might be out there. I haven't seen it with my eyes. Yeah. And it's 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 that thing where it's like, again, it goes into like the sort of uh, crazy conspiracy theories yeah. and, and stuff like that, where it's like everything that's not in your peripheral vision doesn't exist. Because well, how would you know? Well, just just to counter it, like just to be uh, totally <laughs> just to railroad us there, just to completely railroad us, uh, but but also to be uh, equal. Um, uh, Hitchens' razor is a uh, is expressed by writer Christopher Hitchens. It says that the burden of proof regra- bleh, regarding the truthfulness of a claim lies with the one who makes the claim. If this burden is not met, then the claim is unfounded, and its opponents need not argue further in order to dismiss it. Hitchens uh, has phrased the razor in writing, 
what can be asserted without evidence can also be dismissed without evidence. So sometimes an extraordinary claim, when you make an extraordinary claim and you don't even take the effort to um, for the, for the burden of proof, then why should the person being proposed to also take that like no i can dismiss this because you're not willing to do the work either exactly no (laughs) basically you know i can do the 100 meter dash in actually three seconds usain bolt's like actually really slow would you like to prove it no not today no you can i mean uh, maybe another day (laughs) yeah all right i just well why should i believe you then um but that little chunk there at the end of that i just wrote that in basically just kind of give everything a bit of context because there is this weird thing with conspiracy where as soon as someone hears the word conspiracy or conspiracy theory they go they think, oh tin foil hat tin foil hat it's all stupid it's like well in a camper van yeah it's like well a- anything can be a conspiracy me and you can literally conspire to do something right now like what literally literally anything that's how easy it is to to for, to, for two people to conspire so it's Whoa. also not when you then make an assumption about something or make a conspiracy of it's it's not hard to imagine that maybe that that could easily be true um so conspiracy along with um everything else is something that it uh, should be really taken as subjective it's not wrong it's not right it's unfortunately it's someone's opinion and you can battle that opinion with facts uh, and you can because i'm a skeptic myself uh, of most uh, most conspiracies but i i don't know I, there's a certain weight behind skepticism that there's no smoke without fire yeah if i can't if i if i can't take the time to do the work either then i shouldn't be telling people what's what yeah when it comes to conspiracies and stuff i shouldn't be just going no, no that's totally stupid fuck you it's like, I, you haven't looked into it either <laughs> did you hear that the pyramids actually start to walk around at night and actually do like uh crop circles in america because they can fly do you have any proof for this yeah yeah like yeah in, crop in, circles yeah yeah the end yeah <laughs> burden <laughs> proved <laughs> <laughs> you shall never know my secrets um so yeah so i just prefaced that at the end of the whole uh, so, unfortunately, it's completely up to you whether you believe the, the phantom time hypothesis. Or you believe us, because, I mean, honestly... Well, don't believe us. That was someone else's article entirely. I've been really lazy. I would advise <laughs> against believing us and whatever we say. Which is why, because I did just pull some people's articles, I did take one that was kind of exploring it and then one that tried to refute it essentially and if you want to check out all of these you can check out the description or i mean because sometimes the uh podcast and apps are sort of terrible at displaying links you can check it out at cluelessinter.net i will be uploading a pdf and linking that as well if you want to go through this and scrupulously destroy debunk it. everything that we've bought up today. <laughs> yeah just completely debunk it all <laughs> um so this next one, this is where, in the last case, uh, it was one extreme, uh, where it was something that maybe could be believable, but a lot of people are very too, very quick to just go, no, fuck you. Yeah. Uh, this is the other end of the spectrum where I'm just like, oh, fuck Everyone's sake. like, yes, 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 yes. Uh, this, this is where I basically go, oh, shut up, you tit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, flatter. Uh, because this is the, the kind of person who spends... So much time, like this isn't a massively long one, but they spent so much time gathering all this evidence. That's such a shite. It's not evidence. It's just you've gone, this is evidence. I'm claiming this is evidence. It's not. So this is the end of April, uh, a time of human sacrifice. I'm sorry, Howard. It is August. We've kind of missed it. Oh, we missed the human sacrifice. We'll catch it next year. Yeah. Next end of April. Uh, so yeah, so basically, this is the theory that at the end, uh, the end of April is uh, a conspiracy. Uh, world governments and everything, all this like this, basically takes the time at the end of April to uh, genocide a lot of its people um, in a sacrifice to the gods. Okay, and where is this done? Everywhere. Oh, just it's just just the end of April is the time of human sacrifice. <laughs> oh right. Oh, oh. Alex, right. I don't get why you can't understand. <laughs> <this>. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm bored. <laughs> I'm going to die in April. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Um, so what? What? So this Sorry, is an article. Can we slow down? <laughs> this is an article by Vigilant Citizen from uh, April eighteenth, two thousand and thirteen. All oh, getting close. Sorry, you actually mean eighteen thirteen? Sorry, yes, eighteen thirteen. <laughs> or seventeen thirteen. Seventeen thirteen. No, seventeen. Seventeen mm. thirteen. Yeah, sorry, seventeen thirteen. Yeah. 
So this is um, from the website vigilantcitizen.com. I highly suggest you never, ever go anywhere near it. <laughs> It's, it's or a, do. It's do. a massive dumpster fire. It's very entertaining. <laughs> so, yeah, do. I mean, because this is a massive dumpster fire and you're here already, so you may as well immerse yourself completely. So, let's go into this just fucking dive, this guy's own dive into I'm ready. I'm strapped in. I'm already making the phone calls and preparations for April. Uh, yeah. I'll call MI5 and tell them not to worry. We don't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call, Oh, I was... Oh, Sorry. Sorry, yeah, Howard said he doesn't believe it. I'm going to have to cancel the two caskets. Um, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, we're not faking our death today. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, he said faking. <laughs> what a fucking idiot. It's April. <laughs> What's... Oh, anyway, yeah. He thinks yeah, it's August. I think the hearses will have to go as well. Yeah, we could. Pr- yeah, no, we can probably keep like the, the wake. The wake would be cool. Um the food would be nice. Like, we'll have to put somebody else's face who's died in April. I mean, take your pick. Everyone's going. Um, <laughs> it's going to be lit. It's going to be a bloodbath in, in, <laughs> in certain retrospect. Oh, you've already booked the spot that we were going to have in April. Oh, well, it looks like people are thinking ahead. Well, it was nice talking to you. Bye. Watch your back. <laughs> <laughs> so... Why do we often witness tragedy and senseless, senseless, senseless deaths during the second half of April? Because the police exist. This answer the question, Alex. Why do we us often witness tragedy and senseless deaths during the the second half of April? It's so co- everyone. Everyone's asking the question. Well, Alex. it's because it, it's, it's on everyone's it's, tongue. It, it's the uh, Streisand effect. I'm, I'm, is it the Streisand effect where you where you where you're looking for it? I'm just looking for it now. So um, that's not the Streisand effect, but it is another thing you know that's been coined. I know what you're talking about. Like but. when you think about something, you see it constantly. So in April, I'm just constantly thinking about death and tragedy. So it it's why I see it more. Like it's whereas, something. It's something bias essentially, where you you you're looking for something, so you'll find it. Whereas Streisand effect is telling someone not to look at something. So. Everyone looks at so it. So it's both. It's in, it's in the same thing. So people in April are saying, "Look, we got good news. Don't look at death." But in my head, I'm like, "Did she just fucking tell me what to do?" Is everyone dying in April? Yeah, everyone's dying in April. <laughs> and you know, as soon as I get to May, it's all sunshine and lollipops. But in April, it's like just heavy metal, swords and machine guns, and not lollipops, like re- poison lollipops, if if you will. At a push. Yes, or at a push where I off the edge. <laughs> The list of violent events that occurred during this time period is simply staggering, Alex. Staggering. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, like, it is after Christmas and you get through, like, the January, February, March sort of period where you're like, oh, you know, this year might be okay. Then you get to the fourth month and it's like, you know, I, I'm fucking sick of this shit. Now, he's put together some of these, but unfortunately they're just... Tragic things that happened at the end of end middle of middle yeah middle of April um, on differing years. So it's not like they're all from one year. And it's a like, coincidence. Oh look, I think not. <laughs> so April nineteenth, nineteen ninety three, the Waco massacre, an FBI assault led to the burning down and compound of the sect named Branch Davidians, killing seventy six men, women, and children. This is absolutely true. It's uh, there's plenty of documentaries on it. Thank you, FBI. Worth watching. Uh, Kevin Smith did a film job. based on it called Red State, uh, which if you haven't watched, absolutely watch. It's amazing. But not in April because it may cause your, your death. Yes. Um, don't do anything in April. Do nothing. Do nothing. No, don't go to work. Don't eat. Don't drink because you might choke and die. Don't walk because you might trip, break your ankle and fall into the road and die. Don't just... Sorry, I mean do... do... Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, yeah, because we want to bump those numbers up. Get those numbers... Uh, make that curve. Those are amateur numbers. Yeah, we'll make that curve. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Grow that curve. Grow that curve. April oh, 19th, we 1995, two whole years later, uh, the Oklahoma City bombing, 168 people killed. Again, another completely true event. Absolutely happened in April, but it was two years later. Yeah. That doesn't mean everyone's dying in April. And that's, it does. Again, April 19th, so, you know, middle of April. But, Howard, my question to you is how many of those, how many was it? 166. Uh, so the first, the first one was seventy six. Seventy six. Second one was one hundred sixty eight. But how many of those died in April? All of them. Ta- there you go. <laughs> so it's it's Damn true. It. It's You've true. got me. <laughs> <laughs> They're all dying in April. 
1993, April 20th, 1999, the Columbine High School uh, massacre. 13 people murdered, 21 injured. Again, that's a whole four years later. Uh, what, in what month, Edward? Uh, April. <laughs> see, I'm getting you. I'm tripping you up here, see? Hey. April 16th, 2007. So we've only jumped forward six years. The Virginia Tech Massacre, 32 killed, 17 injured. April 16th, 2013, the Boston Marathon Explosions, three killed, 107 107 injured. April 18th, 2013, so this is the same year, uh, fertilizer plant explosion in Texas, uh, five to 15 killed. Oof. That's... Five to 15? I suppose they didn't find. Do you mean five hundred and twenty-five? Be- between or? five and fifteen. Oh, okay. Oh, so, so they probably didn't. Oh. I don't think they found all the bits. Uh, but... <laughs> notice this. This event occurred almost uh, exactly twenty years. Exactly twenty years. I'm just going to stick around them. It just happened twenty years. Exactly twenty years after the Waco massacre, which is the same, is in the same area, two places. Same area. And do you, do you know? Do you know what you do when you, uh, you think about how many months are in the year? Think what what number month is April? Four. April April is the fourth month of the year. January, February, March. Oh, he's April. doing the numerology. And then if you halve that, it's two. Wait, why did we halve it? Well, you halve it. But why? And then you add a zero on the end. <laughs> Wait, we didn't get the, No, and then you add a zero on the end of the two. This is just arbitrary that numbers. That means 20. I, and how mm. many years were between the first one and the last one? 20. Howard, I, I rest my April? case. I'm, <laughs> I've won. It's I've, right. I've won the conspiracy wars. It's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's unrefutable. It's unrefutable evidence. It's also... Un- On April 16th, 1947, a ship loaded with ammonium nitrate docked at the port of Texas City and erupted in flames, causing a massive explosion that killed approximately 576 people. Notice that we've just jumped back to 1947 for some reason. Well, yeah, because when you think about it, when you get the 20... Oh, I forgot. There's an April in 1947. There's an April in 1920, exactly. Fuck. Like, before 19... Whenever that was, there was no Aprils. It was just 11 months. But as soon as they added an April, people started to die in it. So, this list is essentially his proof. Okay. There are no... That I need any more? I need any more. Literally, the only tie is April. (laughs) I need any more. Proof. There's no. It's not tied by space, year, or just just April. Well, space doesn't and have an April. His theory was the end of April, and almost all of this is exclusively the middle of April. Okay, <laughs> pretty much all of it. Um, well, Howard, I want to ask you a question. Like, think, think. Okay, so I'm I'm on this guy's side currently. Um, like, I'm ready to put him in a straitjacket. I mean, when you think about all the, <laughs> when you think about all the other planets. Can you name me another planet that has an April? All of them. N- and just Earth. Ju- just Earth. All of them. Because if we if we if we're analyzing planets based on our measurement of time, then we would have we would assign Mars an April. But does anyone Because on, we'd probably just yeah. Has anyone on Mars be turned longer. a calendar? It'd be longer because to uh, April. It takes, sorry. Has anyone on Mars turned a calendar to April? Answer me that one. Turned a what? Turned a phrase to April. Turned a calendar to April. Have they gone from March on the calendar? Oh, just to cr- see what would happen. Crossed off the last one and, and it, you turn it and it turn just the goes calendar to April. December. There's no yeah. April. <laughs> yeah. How? Do, it, but this this is a paper calendar. Time must work differently here. So when you get so when you go to. Uh, oh well Pluto isn't a planet anymore rest in peace rest Uh, in pepperoni when you go to Uranus and you finally turn from March to April get back to me because this is a 100% a real I'm not even going to call it a conspiracy theory there were many other violent (laughs) (laughs) occurrences Uh, uh, I mean, we shouldn't be laughing about these horrible events, but I'm not laughing at the events. I'm just laughing. I'm loving this I'm theory. Laughing, I'm laughing at the again. Remember how we were talking about why the why should we put any effort in if you're not going to put any effort in? Yeah. This is this this is my prime example of. I'm sorry, you're not convincing me. Uh, you're going to have to do better. Well, he's put them all in a <clears> the spreadsheet. They all, I mean, the, all, he hasn't. All he's put them all in a bullet list. Unrefutably happened in April. <laughs> he's put them in a bullet list on a website. That's more effort than I've gone to prove that December's a deadly month. <laughs> I mean, it's cold. 
Yeah, exactly. So, pe- well, people are just thawing out in April, so they're like, oh, my muscles are all late ready. Better go kill everyone. I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah, I'm not wrong. I have to prove you wrong. I can't be exactly. asked. Well, there you go then. So I win. <laughs> there were many other violent occurrences that happened during that time period. In fact, fact, CNN, <laughs> CNN published an article in 2011. A CNN, see, uh, a very uh, respectable uh, news titled, agency. What is it about mid-April? Again, we've gone to mid- uh, And violence in America. CNN. Dis- it's probably all the guns that are there from January, February, March, it's- April, May, June, July, August, <laughs> September, October, November, December. It's probably... The, we're back the, to April. Uh, December. Sorry, December, January, February, March, April. Uh, we're back, we're back. We're oh, back. Dead. 12 months later, April again. Oh, excuse me. Sadly, the article only bashed conspiracy theories. Just bashed us. Bashed just bashed us. them. How can they? They'll have to listen to this episode because I've just refuted all of their arguments. And basically said, if you look for answers further than mass media, you are crazy and potentially dangerous. However, two years later, the violent trend continues. But um, what the but fuck? All of the all of the cases that he's stated mass media they're widely known events documented there's movies on some of them <laughs> it's not like he's gone like looking through the annals of history but are they are they <laughs> big budget blockbuster movies or indie movies i mean exactly so i'm pretty sure there has been at least a, a, a hollywood movie on the waco massacre at least but did it make a billion dollars in fact no there's been several films based, if not exclusively, on the Oklahoma City bombing around it. In fact, um, Mindhunter, the Oklahoma bombing Fuck, happened that's in Mindhunter. Fuck, that's a good show. <laughs> but did it make over a billion dollars, Howard? I Probably. thought not, so not mass media. <laughs> it oh, didn't God. reach the masses. So, yeah, so basically he's saying, well, you've got to look further than mass media, and then didn't look further than mass media. <laughs> <laughs> Is it all a coincidence? <laughs> Question mark. No. For those in the know, that's me. Me. That's <laughs> not you. You're the one there refuting are, it. There are no such thing as coincidences. Blanket no. No. statement. No. no such thing as coincidences. No, there is not. There is not in on this planet. I mean, the on sun Mars, goes maybe. down, the moon comes up. You can't explain that. That's a coincidence, I think. No. There's no such thing as coincidence. Oh, yeah, sorry. There's no such thing as coincidence. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> you immediately went, fuck oh, it. <laughs> My whole conspiracy has gone in ruins. Uh, in 2011, I wrote an article. Me, but did anyone listen? No, the fools. Uh, Wait, I, you wrote an article? I did, yeah, me. Or I him. wrote, yeah, this is the guy still from the... I wrote an article about the death of Bin Laden. Mm, announced... Congratulations. Between April 30th and May 1st. See why the death of the man who was not behind 9-11 was announced on May 1st. Mm. I bet you he was just there, like, going, like, as soon as, like, tragedies happen or something, he's just like, don't go over into May, don't go over into May. (laughs) (laughs) And it's relation to a god that is still important for the occult elite. Ball. Barack Obama. The ball. Oh, who? (laughs) Obama. Um, throughout many <laughs> centuries, across many civilizations, the second half of April has always been a time of blood sacrifice. The worship of Baal took many names: Enlil, Molech, uh, etc. Yeah, sp- yeah, I've heard of that one. <laughs> and spread across um, several civilizations. That's what I tend to call April. Being a sun god. And a god of fertility, ritual celebrating Baal took place after the ver- uh, vernal equinox, a time of rebirth and often involved in human sacrifice. Okay. Uh, and then he starts citing some things as evidence. And he starts writhing on the floor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, he started citing some things as, as evidence. Oh, so the evidence hasn't come yet. So we're, well, the, so I was, I was on board completely already. So. Oh, well, he's lining up that... Um, I bought a T-shirt. Well, he's already proved that April is the month. Yes. Now yeah. I'm on board. He wants to prove to us why. Oh, April I don't need it, my man. I'm, I'm on board. Can we skip this bit? I'm I'm perfectly fine. I'm... Well, the thing is, he's citing <laughs> very reputable sources, uh, not biased in any way, such as the Baal. His own website. <laughs> such as the Baal Encyclopedia Mythica. Ah, right. I get you. <laughs> the get cult you. of Baal celebrated annually his death and resurrection as part of a Canaanite fert- uh, fertility rituals. These ceremonies often included human sacrifice and temple prostitution. 
<laughs> they go hand in hand, apparently. Uh, although the observance of these rituals was sometimes condemned by religious movements, it never truly disappeared. The religion of the god Baal was widely accepted among the ancient Jews. And here comes the anti-Semitism. Oh my my favourite part of a conspiracy theory. I think I just... You know, I, you know, I think I just figured out what this was. We have the flying spaghetti monster religion and now we've got the Baalagnese sauce. <laughs> Baalagnese sp- and spaghetti came together. Coming together <laughs> to eradicate everyone in April. I get it, Howard. I get it. I get it. I've been enlightened. My third eye is open. My third eye is officially... Oh, that's just my so fly. So the religion of the god Baal was widely accepted among the ancient Jews, and although it was put down at times, it was never permanently stamped out. Kings and other royalty of ten biblical tribes... Uh, biblical tribes worship the god the ordinary people ardently worship the sun god too because their prosperity depended on the productivity of their crops and livestock i mean not gonna lie if i if i was back in if i was back in like like what what year what years were these like 1200 basically i am gonna skip some of this but (laughs) what they're basically saying here is if i quickly read forward is that they're saying that it's leading. I, I, I knew where this story was leading as I was reading it, which is why I had to include it. Uh, they're basically saying that the, the religion of the God of Baal was widely accepted among the ancient Jews and that it was put down at times, but it uh, has survived all the way to now. Yes. So, what do you think they're trying to say? That Jewish people are evil. the Illuminati and that they're ruling, ru- ruling the world and that they're all the bankers and all that. Oh, you know, the t- and there the, it is. Yeah. There like, it, it took is. me like I was reading through it and I went, <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, okay. So I am going to skip some of this shit because he literally, he's just citing, uh, he cites the Bible. He cites a chapter from something called Ibid. Uh, and they're all like, he's like, he's like citing them as if they're reputable sources, sources for why he's absolutely right. Occult holidays and Sabbaths, cutting edge. What the fuck is that? Um, <laughs> a band? And it's like, yes, all these things are citing like blood sacrifice and fire sacrifice and, and uh, in April and it's like the 13th. And both? What about fire blood uh, sacrifice? April 19th is the first day of the 13-day satanic ritual day relating to the fire, the fire god Baal or Molech Nimrod, the sun god, also known as the Roman god, Saturn, Satan, devil. This day is a major human sacrifice. And it's like, it's just reeling, 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 reeling off. It's like he's put so many sources and cites so many sources they all say the same thing, and none of them pr- cite any evidence. It's all just it's all just writings on religion, and it's like you can't put forth the Bible as evidence. Yeah, I mean, it's the uh, Bible is a subjective document, not not of history. It's of pa- it's parables. It's they're fairy tales. But it, like I, 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 the Bible's a great book, along with all the other religious texts. They're all brilliant parables. They've got fantastic stories of morals in them, and all this other wank. But <laughs> they're not documents to be cited for historical accuracy. Yeah. Um, I think you can find trends in religious books. So, like the fact that all the religious books tend to mention a massive flood at a, at a, around the same sort of time, kind of. There was probably a massive probably flood. A lot of water around at yeah, that point. But you can't take from that exactly how much there was and what masses and which ones were flooded and what. Because they didn't write that shit down. They were they just, just went, like, there was a big lot. flood. Man, build boat. Big <laughs> water. Me take two lions. God say, get in boat. Put all the animals in the boat and go for a swim. Fuck, <laughs> these are two boys I fucked. <laughs> it's like, you can't. I'm sorry, but they're not historical documents. Um, uh, so, in conclusion. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just going to skip all of this one. <laughs> all of this one, because it's all, it's literally like several par- paragraphs on occultism and uh, religion and stuff. So, in conclusion, those who know about occult calendars, not me because I skipped this section, <laughs> <laughs> enter the second half of April wondering if something horrific is about to happen. Always be constantly on edge and terrified. I mean, I am now. now that but only in April. When we go into April. Yeah, yeah. when we yeah, go into April. April like, I'm going to walk outside with my wallet hanging out. Like You don't later. have to worry about coronavirus. You don't have to... Ah. Yeah, it's no, not it's April. not a thing. It's not, not April. April. You're not going to get genocide. You know, this is coronavirus light. When it uh, gets coronavirus. to April. <laughs> coronavirus light. This, you know, when we get to April, it's going to be fucking coronavirus pro. We're going to get like... 
it's uh, the last of us is going to happen in april i, I guarantee it, i guarantee it. if 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 it's wrong you can don't at me on twitter i mean because well, we'll all be dead this this conclusion kind of puts you it kind of shows you his state of mind and how he views other people especially people who i think i know how he views certain it. other people um those who know about occult calendars uh, enter the second half of April wondering if something horrific is about to happen. Sadly, every few years it does, and the public is traumatised with a senseless and violent event. But we're like that with I mean, fucking every I mean, are we really traumatised unless it actually happens to us? Uh, like a lot of these things day. happened in my lifetime, and I was like, oh, that's terrible, that's horrific, but I'm not in any way traumatised. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <clears throat> Suppose, and most events, I suppose if it was most events to home. aren't senseless. They tend to have a reason because they happen. Unfortunately, they're terrible, <laughs> but yeah, they tend to have a reason. Not saying that they're good reasons, but... Almost every time, a closer look at the event leads to a strange and suspicious facts. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And Jews more... were involved <laughs> somehow. And more often than not, hints towards an inside job. Alex. There it is. There it is. Well, you know, every, well, <laughs> every day I always think everything is an inside job. You know, No, literally everything's an inside job. The, the idea that anything could just happen uh, of accordance or or that the, the universe... Somebody is, knew. Or that the universe is an in, entirely uh, in a, a kind of falling spin of chaos and that, you know, things tend to happen. The idea of the... No, everything is uh, controlled by gods and men and everything is perfectly planned out and Baal, Baal and the occult. Baal Agnes. <laughs> Baal Agnes and spaghetti are coming for your children. Yes, yeah. so hide them when it comes to April. While many will ascribe the occurrence of these events during the end of April to coincidence... Like many people. <laughs> like everyone. The fact remains, mass violent events involving death and fire happen regularly during the same period that is occultly dedicated to Baal. And it's like, no, it's not. To you it is because you you believe. it's your. You clearly have some weird faith where you believe in this Baal. It's like, to everyone else, Baal is a fucking fairy tale. No one cares, dude. Baal <laughs> is a delicious condiment. <laughs> That you put on spaghetti. Yeah, it's like you have to prove. I think I've done enough First, of this you have joke to, now. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, for God's sake, not the world doesn't revolve around your crazy ideas. Um, but they can. And if and you the want the beauty of free speech is that you can believe. If you want to prove and tie the, the, if you want to prove these events are somehow tied and that there's that there's a blood sacrifice month, I don't want to know about a thousand year old. Um, information. I want to know. Uh, I want to see documents. I want to see the fact that the CIA planned to take out this this portion of people here, and or uh, 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 within run, April run interference here, so we can do this thing over here without people noticing. We'll just genocide a few people. Here. I want to see proof of that, and not just you tying it to the Bible and other occult books. Plus, you would think that somebody would sit down at this meeting of Baal and just say. Do you think April's becoming a little bit obvious? Like we've done, we've done a lot in April. Do you think maybe we should like push a few to May just to throw people off the scent? Because we've 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 got who is this guy who runs this website? Person. Um, hang on. Um, <laughs> what was his name? Something because he's on to us, and I think we should maybe push a few of these tragedies over to May, or maybe oh. like push them further into the year. Like we've got a, August is a good real estate. It's the vigilant, vigilant citizen. The village, vi, village. <laughs> no, I'm vigilant you citizen. The vigilant citizen. <laughs> the villager citizen. Uh. Um, because he's on to us. He's on to us, a fellow ball uh, empl empl employees. I'm ball employee of the month. <laughs> Whether this is all done on purpose or just the result of some crazy universal synchronicity, the fact is still there and cannot be disputed, Alex. It cannot. It, it can't. It can't. I, I can't. I, he's, I, give, he's given I've too much evidence, best. Alex. It's, it's solid. It's, I've tried my best. It's unfallible. I have tried my best. Um, incidentally, the compound that was burned down in the 1993 Waco massacre was named Mount Carmel Center. In the Bible, Mount Carmel was where uh, Elijah, uh, Elijah defeat, def, defied the prophets of Baal, challenging them to pray to Baal until he lit a fire in front of them. No fire was lit. 
was the fire at Mount Carmel Center a symbolic revenge of Baal? No, because Mount Carmel Center was named. It's not actually... What? We have limited words in the human language, and <sighs> we use them. And it's like, you just put in... You just go and fire Mount Carmel. There was an explosion there once. Was that Baal? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but yeah, the entire time I was reading that, I was like, in fact, the second time reading it through, I just got kind of bored. I do just love the sort of mental gymnastics that that, I such, actually, that yeah. some people go through. I actually got, like, so I got bored at this point, so I started reading to you. So just to give everyone a visual, we're scrolling up multiple pages <laughs> of just a lot of text. So this bold bit is where I started, where he started citing sources okay what page is that we read that one page seven we read that okay and then we started reading that where he starts to, where he starts saying it's the jews okay yeah <laughs> and then we skipped all this all we've gone down at least five paragraphs mm, six skip seven that, eight skip that. Skip that. we got to the conclusion so we went okay. from page seven to page ten okay so we, went... so we skipped three pages of um entirely useless sources that mean Absolutely nothing. But again, you can read them if you want at cluelessinter.net. Um, and, and like I said before, I don't like people being immediately dismissive of stuff like this. But at the same time, it's like, again, like if you're not going to put the work in, and I consider that if you're going to use things like that, then I consider you haven't put the work in. I don't think you've put the work in. I think that's fucking lazy. I mean, I can come up with a lot of coincidences. Like anyone can. Myself, you know, it's so very easy. But no, I'm on board. I'm going to be looking out in April. Um, but I, 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 I must say, now that I've read that article, I will be subconsciously in April be like, oh, holy shit! I'm going to start keeping an eye out for tragedies. Yeah. I want to see if, uh, yeah, I want to see if that kind, of, if anything happens. Yeah, hey, do you know how mind blown we're going to be if just like a load of shit happens in if April? Everyone well, dies happened, in April. What happened this April? Uh, I mean, lockdown. Mm. Sort of started. It was the uh, oh, was March it? was lockdown, wasn't it? March into April. It sort of went oh. March into April, wasn't it? So, oh, oh, oh have, have we just... so it has did April never finish? Did April? Are we still in April? April never finished. Have they did, have they been lying to us? Is April actually six months long? Welcome to April. Is this why this, we're missing three hundred years? Alex, help! <laughs> <laughs> Is that the end of, uh, uh, what was his vigilant? Yeah, so in, he came to the conclusion that he was right and that we were wrong. Oh, yeah, no, I totally get him. I totally, he came yeah. to the conclusion that all his evidence was perfectly <laughs> was perfectly right and not, I see not, no problem not with suspect this. in any way. I see no problem with this. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> we're going to move on to uh, Alex's favourite. My favourite! Section of the podcast. Theory real, theory fake. Blah, 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 blah. Three real and three fake. So, Alex. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. To the Thunderdome. This is the interview? Yes. Oh, right. Great. I've got my cleats. Uh, uh, I'm ready. All you have to do is get all of these exactly right, and you'll be fine. All of what? Sorry. The questions. What? The, what, the questions? It's an interview. Uh, the, oh, yeah. Oh, right. Shit, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I've never been to one. Then. A what? Homeless. <laughs> okay. So, I've got for you... So I keep the cleats on. Sure. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, just, no it's just because I've got shin pads and a helmet in, in my bag. I shin pads? These? In your helmet. In my helmet. Yeah, and I was going to put them on because I thought they were going to be... I, uh, never mind. I thought this was going to be a group interview and we were going to, you know... Wrong party. This is, like, <laughs> this is for the for the ice This is the orgy, team. yeah? The, <laughs> yeah, I, you know... I'm sorry, I've, go. I've got a phone call. Uh, yeah, mom, uh, you died. Oh, I'm, I'm on my way. 300 years. <laughs> April. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, oh, yeah. So, I real real for you... Fake. Oh, sorry. No. Three th theory, theory real, real th or theory or fake? Theory fake, and if you can't so, get that, that's three real, three fake. My favourite. <laughs> three of these theories are proven. 
they actually happen. Oh, they actually happen. Okay. Three of if them. If you are, say fucking MK Ultra, three of them. It's not three real, three fake because three of them are still theories, but they haven't been proven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So three. So, so three real, three up in the air. Yeah. Okay. Kinda. <laughs> I get you. Um. So, number one in the 1950s and 60s, Canada had a secret gaydar program. <laughs> secret gaydar program. Real or fake? Oh fuck! I'm gonna want to say real to all of these, aren't I? Um, Pretty much. <laughs> I can't see Canada being a gaydar sort of country. But then again, in the 50s, oh, you know, just because it's the first song I'm going to say fake. I think you're trying to trip me off at first. Fuck. I'm going to look back at this and get every single one wrong. It, it's hard because oh, trust they're me, all I so know. good. I've put you through the ringer with this one a few times. Operation, no, sorry, number two, Operation Jade Helm. In 2015, the U.S. Army designated Texas a hostile territory and planned a federal occupation of the Lone Star State. And it's still in place today. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Uh, this is the theory. Okay, yeah, no, I want to say that one's true because that one sounds like just batshit insane that it would... And it's in America, so that does sort of like lower the bar of insane insanity. So, I, yeah, no, that one's, yeah, real. 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 Uh, Number three. The CIA created an untraceable... Real. <laughs> as soon as I hear the CIA. <laughs> an untraceable heart attack gun in the 1960s. That is real, I think. I think real? that one's real. I, I want to be kind of... Co- Fuck, I shouldn't have said Texas. <laughs> gay, gaydar, I want a gaydar now. <laughs> Give me a gaydar. <laughs> <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Uh, number four. The Pearl Harbor cover-up. The US had advanced knowledge of the 1941 attack, but feigned surprise, needing a reason to go to war with Japan and enter World War II. Hmm, this sounds like a similar one to another theory. Um, I want to say that one's fake. That one sounds too obvious. Sounds okay. say- oh, no. Oh, no. Actually, no. I think that one is actually real. But I'm going to say fake for prosperity. Fake. So we've gone yeah. fake, real. Fake. Fake, real, oh, no, real, fake. fake. Yeah, fake, yeah. real, real, fake. So, so num- I've got one more real to go. Number five. Between the 1940s and 80s, large swaths of Britain were exposed to bacteria sprayed in secret trials. Oh, God. You, you just love it when you trust the government, don't you? <laughs> uh, I want to say... It's, I a, want... it's, a lo- it's a large amount of time, the yeah. 40s and 80s. Yeah. <laughs> so they just did it in the 40s, said, oh, we'll probably give it a break, and came back in the <laughs> Wait 80s. Wait till the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> These motherfuckers know. have got too rowdy. So this this is uh, between the 1940s and 80s, so for 40 years, okay, um, shit. swaths of Britain were exposed to bacteria sprayed in secret trials. Uh, Jesus. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say fake so I can keep my last reel for the, for the last one. I'm playing it strategically rather than emotionally. Okay. Okay. In October 1943, aided by the CIA. Real. Real. Me. The CIA is <laughs> involved. Take a break Real. To burp. Uh, aided by the CIA, Pentagon, uh, and Project Paperclip, the USS Eldridge was rendered invisible right by, refl- by refracting light around it. Oh, fucking please, yes. Real. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. All right, so what did I go? <clears throat> I went. So you said in the, in the 1950s and 60s, Canada had a secret gaydar program. You said fake. It was... Uh, that's been proved to be true. Oh, my God. Canada, come on, bro. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> um, in most cases, you don't need one. So, should we jump to the story, or should I keep going through the list? Just let me know which ones i got right and wrong, so I can get okay. crushed now rather than later. <laughs> uh, number two, Operation Jade Helm. In 2015, the US Army designated Texas a hostile territory and planned a federal occupation of the Lone Star State. You said true. It was fake. It's false. Fuck, or oh, it's up in the air, sorry. Was yeah, it? well, it's, yes, it's, 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 it's up uh, in the air. Still a theory. You know, there are many guns. And 2015 has yet to cut... Co- oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fuck. <laughs> Damn it. Um, oh, was that when it ended, 2015? Uh, supposedly. That's when it supposedly ended. Supposedly. Okay. Jeez, man. Um, um, number three, the CIA created an untraceable heart attack gun in the 1960s. You said... I said fake for that one, I think. Oh, no. No, you no, said true. I said true, I said true, actually, yeah. Yeah, you were right. They yes, did. I think I heard about that one 
before, I think, because, I mean, we keep mentioning him, but Joe Rogan. Yeah, that's one I was worried guard. you might have heard of. Because Mike Baker talked about it, I think. He was talking about how they could have, like, certain waves to make people have headaches or nausea or something, just, like, through ah. fucking walls and see, shit. See, now that's newer technology. Yeah. The technology they used was actually, they didn't have... Oh, see, that's what he was talking have, about now, so I was like, yeah. they probably had shit like that so before. back then they didn't have sonic technology and stuff like that, so this is, it's actually rather they ingenious how they did technology. it. It's ingenious how they did it. I'll, I'll sell you in a bit. Did you hear that brilliant joke? What? He said they didn't have sonic technology. They only had knuckles. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I'll be here at least <laughs> once every two weeks. <laughs> uh, number four, the Pearl Harbor cover-up. The US had advanced knowledge of the 1941 attack, but faint surprise, needing a reason to go to war with Japan. And now, I said fake, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was real. Uh, you are... Right, in the fact that... N- Currently, not, we don't know. The US has never admitted to that. Thank you, <clears throat> US, for letting me win that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, between the 1940s and 80s, large swaths of Britain were exposed to bacteria sprayed in secret trials. Oh, I said that one was fake. Is that one real? Uh, that one has been since been proven to be true. Fuck! Um, it, With what? Uh, or I guess we'll get into that. Uh, uh, and in October 1943, aided by the CIA Pentagon, the Project Paperclip of the USS Eldridge was rendered visible. This uh, actually has another name called the Philadelphia Experiment. Hell yeah. Uh, which Born and raised. Um, is again On the playground. Again, has never been admitted to by the US. It's a rather uh, kind of odd story where the whole idea of it being rendered invisible was actually that they teleported and ended up somewhere else uh, in the ocean. Uh, and when they reappeared they found that crewmen and stuff were actually fused with the ship bulkheads and stuff um many people died like halfway through floors and stuff um the, the theory so the theory game. goes it's a video game um what so like i think i think it's partially based on truth that they were trying to create cloaking technology um in fact we've created since created cloaking technology um the actual the idea of reflect refracting light with lots of uh, very small like panels that can move and stuff. Uh, we've, we've abs- they've absolutely worked on that technology. I'm pretty sure they tried to line one of the stealth jets with it. See, I just wanted to imagine somebody going over the Pentagon and going, <laughs> wow, but- I'm on the floor. <laughs> And dead, <laughs> but that but that was in the nineties. The idea that they had that technology in the forties is kind of insane. Like because those people were so stupid. I think, ha, got them. I think they perfected the technology in the mid two thousands. So a long time. So the idea been. that they had it in the 1940s is, is kind of insane. But it wouldn't surprise me if they claimed it though. Um, so yeah, what? Well, uh, so the first one was the so, gaydar. Yes, first one uh, was the. Yes. Well, it depends on which one you want to go for. Let's yes. So the the much worse name that they actually used for it. The oh, can I guess? Uh, give it a guess. Uh, the gay detectinator or the think punny. Oh, Something the, with a pun the, in it. The um, uh, spray and gay. <laughs> oh God! The oh. it was it wasn't it wasn't to. And I'm doing this in air quotes. Was it a gun? Fix shape? anybody? It was just to. It was it, the to idea is out. that it could detect them. Okay. Um, oh, a a uh, mm, a gay of light. Um, <laughs> it's called the fruit machine. <laughs> <laughs> fruit machine is. <laughs> Sake. The cunts is a term for a device developed in Canada by uh, Frank Robert Wake and was supposed to be able to identify gay men. And so many drunk middle-aged men were disappointed in with the spoons <laughs> that day. Derogatorily, derogatorily referred to as fruits. The subjects were made to view pornography. Uh, the device then measured the diameter of pupils in the eyes. Uh, oh my god, I actually know this. And then, perspiration yeah. and pulse uh, for oh. a supposed erotic response. God. Uh, the fruit machine was employed in Canada in the 1950s and 1960s during a campaign to eliminate all gay men from the civil service, uh, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and the military. Do you feel anything when you see these people touching? I think we found another one. <laughs> I like, mean, I feel all kinds of things. My eyes are just getting wider because you're like shining things or like getting closed. Essentially, you've put me in a clinical like... But the thing is, I don't think they were told... What they were looking for? Oh, they were just... They were just... Uh, it was a trial for look a... Look at the naked man on the screen! Well, this is why it was a conspiracy. They never told the people who were involved in the, uh, in, in the campaign, but later events would... Um, Fuck me. Like, you just ignore the private... Uh, per, like, just observing your privates 
we're just testing to see if you have strong blood. Um, a substantial number of workers did lose their jobs. Ah. So although the funding for the fruit machine project was cut off in the late 1960s, the investigation continued. went on continued. for a while. Uh, I think it went on for 10 years. Um, Fuck. The investigations continued after that. The RCMP collected files on over 9,000 suspected gay people. Like, I mean, what, I mean, what, it, I suppose, I, fuck, like, what does it change? They can still shoot a gun. Do you know what I mean? Well, this, this is where, like. Is it for the army? Sorry, am the, well, I getting that wrong? Or is it just for, like, construction? Uh, civil, uh, uh, anything that's um, to do with oh, so like the, the, police. the government, essentially. Anyone oh. who is um, a public worker. Oh. Uh, so. Fucking hell. It's, 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 it's the reason why you immediately poo-pooed this one is because you go Canada nah. yeah well I thought yeah can if you would have said yeah. like America or you would have said like yeah you would have jumped on that and gone yeah, yep, I, would have gone, yep. yeah, yeah. I mean they, they had the fucking the uh, what was it the red books uh, the things where it's like oh they're uh, a commie and yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. in Hollywood's a commie and when you investigate these people you can no longer work in Hollywood because you're a communist sympathizer and... yeah fucking shit you're gonna have to like bleep all the times that I swear <laughs> this episode have fun with that one the chair employed resembled that used by dentists it had a pulley with a camera going towards the pupils with a black box located in front of it that displayed pictures the pictures ranged from mundane to sexually explicit photos of men and women it had previously been determined that the pupils would dilate in relation to the amount of interest in the picture per the per technique. Tit. <laughs> per tit. Uh, <laughs> per the technique termed pupillary response test, which is completely in fact, There's no... It doesn't indicate interest. It indicates, oh, there's, there's, there's this much light going into my eyes. That picture has changed in contrast. Now there's less light going into my eyes. So his eyes seem to get a lot wider when it's a dark picture of a naked man rather than the very bright picture of the woman in uh, full clothing. Uh, I We've got I, another one. I think we know the conclusion. Yeah. You're in. Um, oh, sorry. A. <laughs> a. You're in, eh? Oh, we I got see. another one. Oh, I see. Well, Thing when? is, I don't think we can use this picture because he's a very handsome man. <laughs> and my eyes are off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we can't judge that. Look at that. It's a beautiful man. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Outed myself. <laughs> Fuck sake. Come uh, on, Canada. Yeah. Come on, Canada. Uh, I mean, I suppose... I suppose we... they have come on, actually, haven't they? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Well, that's what got some of them fired. Uh, oh, people oh. were first led to believe that the machine's purpose was oh. to rate stress uh, after knowledge of its real... So that's what they told them. Like, oh, we're yeah, going to see how stressed they, you are. After you get your dick out. After knowledge of its real purpose became widespread, few people volunteered for it. I wonder why. It's like they come up with all these... <clears> like, what, why is fruit a slur? Why is it just... Um, I think the term fruity essentially used to mean uh, flamboyant. I can't remember. I don't know what the actual connection is, but it's always kind of been the idea is it's fruity, so you'd call them a fruit. Same that they would be. What would it, um, they're a fairy? Why? Because they're, they're uh, just because fluffy, light, pink things. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, the stereotype. It's very lazy, essentially. Yeah, yeah, it's the idea that all gay people are going to be very effeminate, uh, are going to speak and act in a certain way. Uh, you can just tell it's lazy. Yeah. Lazy slum. Not, well, not saying that I want it to be horribly worse. I mean, the entire experiment itself was lazy. It was like, uh, we're going to focus on this. Why? Because it, it shows... Into, no, it doesn't. It shows light going in and out. We know the science of eyeballs, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> well, There's the nothing Canadians psychological didn't. about... Un, un, unless you're on some kind of drug that then does affect your pupils and then technically you could... Yeah, you know. But it doesn't mean... Hmm. Wonder if you're on cocaine and just your eyes are like massive. The accuracy and functional mechanism of the fruit machine was questionable. First, the pupillary response uh, test was based on fatally flawed assumptions. The visual stimuli uh, would give an involuntary reaction that could be measured scientifically. Yeah, because you couldn't control whether your <laughs> eyes would just get bigger. You're just like, oh, don't do it. Just stay close. Fuck. Pretend you don't like the penis. <laughs> Um, He's just saying that to the uh, to the examiner, <laughs> and the examiner's like, "I will." <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> uh, 
Um, the visual stimuli would give an involuntary reaction that could be measured scientifically that homosexuals and heterosexuals would respond to these stimuli differently and that there were only two types of sexuality. If only they you're could either see either gay today. or you're not gay. You're either gay or you're normal. <laughs> it's like, fuck. <laughs> eh? You're sorry, either gay. Eh? Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Back in the, yeah. Yeah, it would be like, you're either... You're yeah, you're either straight or you're dead to me. <laughs> well, it's all, it's all like religious and shit. And it all goes down to like such a fucking... Well, it's all stupid when you, when, when you go like the whole idea that... Uh, as well as well that like homosexuality is a new thing. It's like yeah, no. The yeah. Recorded recorded events of it happening all over like places like Greece and stuff. And and I always remember that old vine, the one where the woman's walking past and he goes, "They were roommates," which is what they always put for all these historical yeah. figures, where it's just like, "Oh, these two just happened. Men happened to live together and, and they sleep loved each together. other very much, and they slept in the same bed, but, but they never touched apart. ever." <laughs> Not even share a pipe, which is a very manly man thing to do. <laughs> they don't chop wood together, they do it separately. <laughs> and eat meat separately. You only get one penis touch in your life. And it better be your own. <laughs> <laughs> it better be a good one. Oh, <clears throat> <clears throat> the idea was based on a study done by American University professor. There it is. <laughs> there they come. Which measured the size of subjects' pupils as they walked through the aisles of grocery stores. Now, let me tell you. So he was basically like, ladies like it when the shoe comes by. <laughs> <laughs> Men like it when the car go. Vroom. Why do why do all these ladies' pupils get really small whenever I look them directly in the eye? Maybe they're lesbians. Got them. <laughs> is it me that's wrong, or is it the rest of the world? No, it's the no, lesbians. No, it's the rest of the world. <laughs> it's the lesbians who are wrong. Like, <laughs> what? Uh, in November 2017, Justin Trudeau apologises to the LGBT community for discrimination by the federal agencies during the question period uh, in the Houses of Commons of Ottawa. Uh, he has had a lot of shit on his shoulder, and he Justin Trudeau, and he's had like that whole blackface shit. Which how he survived that one? The I'm sure he got cancelled for that. Well, one. Well, I think he actually came out with a sincere apology, if I remember rightly. Whether an apology is enough is isn't for me to answer because I'm not. Uh, black, uh, so it's it's none of my damn uh, business, business what they decide. Uh, but I I assume people have taken his apology as. I mean, apology that. should be fucking good by now. You've got enough like research material on YouTube when it comes to apology videos. You should be able to nail them first try now. Yeah, well, Justin Trudeau often apologizes for things, even things that he didn't do. Like, like with this, it's like it was nothing to do with me, but obviously, I represent the government, so yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make the apology. He is uh, the face of the <clears throat> government. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the sources for Fair that, I've, I've put the sources in there, and I've also put a link to Trudeau's apology, and also a link to a documentary called The Fruit Machine, which I haven't seen yet, but just from the trailer, I do want to see. And it's essentially people's own first-hand reports of their time in these trials and how they were treated uh, Ooh, before me. and after. Uh, so I do want to see that because it's interesting. Yeah. Fucking hell. Come on, Ken. <laughs> Go, Ken. So like like we said, they I think they have come on along. They've come along. Yeah. <laughs> come along, Canada. They've come along a long way. I mean, um, we all have to the to the point where places. Canada, though the, though it's not perfect, like with any other country, the UK, America. Uh, but all you have Canada's to think... definitely one of those kind of bastions of morality, r- morality, and kind of you know reasonable like consideration for things and stuff. People like can't that, so. see it, but I'm constantly saluting this. <laughs> okay. So the CIA heart attack gun, which yeah. uh, <laughs> fuck. Death Note in its original form. <laughs> well, uh, the, the 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 heart attack gun, uh, nicknamed Hag, is the weapon that <laughs> was revealed in the night in 1975 at a hearing of committee led by Frank Church. At the hearing, Church showed off the CIA's heart attack gun, which was a modified Colt 911. Uh, there's actual f- footage of him holding it. <laughs> 
Oh, it kind of yeah. It kind of looks like it's just got a big scope. It's on. just a gun with a scope on. Yeah, when you said nag, I thought they were just going to be like a woman that goes into the room and just <laughs> starts nagging the person. I was like, well, we've got homophobia. We've got we need misogyny. Well, yeah, what else can we tackle? Last today? one's going to be racism. Come on, the sixties. <laughs> well, actually, no. We've already had sort of racism. We had people hating on Jews. What else can? What else can? What else can what we else tick can off? We get? Um, I mean, a lot of conspiracies are fairly benign, but then a lot of the time, annoyingly, a lot of the biggest conspiracies are the ones that are kind of. A lot of the more interesting ones are kind of deluged in people who just kind of tie a bunch of because it's it's the nature of conspiracy to be able to just go oh and this thing and people <laughs> just kind of tie a bunch of like anti-Semitic uh, rhetoric they just attach all kinds of shit to these conspiracy theories and entirely ruin it for all the fucking rational conspiracy theorists who are just like I just want some fun with conspiracies it was really fun until you started blaming everyone it was really fun until the white supremacist turned up <laughs> uh, is a sentence you can use almost exclusively <laughs> everywhere always <laughs> <laughs> Um, the gun is electrically powered with a battery and fires an extremely small bullet of ice with a frozen shellfish toxin in the centre. Oh, is it the um? Oh, is it the ah? There's a there's a fish um. There's a fish in Japan. Most likely, I'm going to assume that yeah, the puffer fish. The, oh um, no, there's a, there's a, there's another fish in Japan that I can't remember the name of, but you have to be trained to cut it because you need to cut out certain parts of the fish, and pe- people have died from it. And you just sort of, they cut it in very thin slices. So, like, you have to be specifically trained to cut yeah. this fish or you will die. Most likely a toxin from something like that. But it does say shellfish, so it's probably some kind of weird bottom Oyster. feeder kind of thing. Um, but essentially it was, a, it, was, it was a pellet of ice with the toxin inside. The uh, pellet would go in, melt, release the toxin into the body. No, it just sounds easier just no to trace. shoot someone. But also, like, the... Uh, but, no uh, uh, according to Mary Omri of the a former CIA employee, Omri. the heart attack gun reportedly could pierce through clothing, leaving no signs of impact on the skin except a small red dot. The tar- oh, well, yeah, because it would just melt, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Fuck, that is smart, to be honest, but fucked. <laughs> the targeted person would feel nothing beyond a slight sting comparable to a mosquito bite. That's kind of, I'm going to have to admit, that's really quite scary. That is really quite... I'm good. So, first of all, I've got to avoid April... Second of all, I've got to avoid any like sort of sting. I'm going to feel a sting on my body tonight and just go, ah, I'm having a heart attack. I'm being assassinated. <laughs> uh, CIA director William Colby stated that in 1952, the CIA, CIA, the CIA, CIA. <laughs> uh, began a super secret research program codenamed uh, MK. They like calling things MK. MK Ultra. Is, it, uh, is this going to be MK Super? Is this the pre- the uh, pre MK Ultra. MK Naomi. Oh. <laughs> Don't know why. Partly to find That was ca- the first victim. <laughs> Partly to find countermeasures to chemical and biological weapons that might be used by the Russian KGB. That's actually a really it's good theory. Always that they tested it on Naomi. <laughs> it was like, oh that works. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. But yeah, it's always the KGB. It's so rough. they're just showing off the like, yeah, this is meant to actually improve your uh, stamina, your health. Uh, you're supposed to be able to read books quicker. <clears throat> we'll we'll demonstrate on Naomi over here. Pew. It may be something that they. Oh, there she goes. Oh, there. <laughs> oh, there. She... Oh God, there. The... There. She... There she goes. Oh God. Um, cl- close the curtain. Close. Close the curtain. She, she's Naomi, fine. close the curtain. Oh, she's, she's dead. <laughs> oh, she had a heart attack. Um... <laughs> It's always the KGB, though, isn't it? When it comes to America, it's always like we think the, we think the Russians are doing this, so we're doing this now. Yeah, it may have been it may have been a power ploy. The weapon might not have worked at all. It might have just been their way of saying to the KGB, "Look, we can do this. How we look, can look do at how this. Awesome we Mess are, yeah. with us, and we'll 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 do it to you." And they go, "Do it then." And they <laughs> the- go. We will. We, if you push us any, any further, he just comes up, punches him in the face. He goes, you punch me again, again and I'll do it. I'll do it. Just like three hours later, just completely bloody face. Just, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> punch me the 757th time and I'll, I'll do it. Um, so the conspiracy uh, is that the cause of death of the victims is said to be uh, heart attacks because they claim that it's never been used. So the conspiracy is the cause of death. Yeah, uh, yeah. Of Tell the that victim, to Naomi. <laughs> of the victims is said to uh, be heart attacks, and that the gun is used by the CIA to commit assassinations that can't be traced back to them. Many conspirators believe that the CIA is still using the gun today. 
I mean, uh, when you think about it, if it actually works and it's like it, it is like that. It just feels like a boop, and then you just you die of a heart attack. There's yeah. no traceable evidence. Why wouldn't you use it? I, I like. I, I, I think that sounds it's really fucking dangerous. Yeah, but, but it also, I, if it I also, was a world pair, I'd fucking use that shit. It sounds less traceable than a sonic weapon because a sonic weapon is going to rupture your fucking organs and stuff. They're going to know that you were hit by either a sonic weapon or a blast wave from an explosive. Ah, see, there's only organs. there's pretty much two things you can tie that to. <laughs> his organs looked like my porridge this morning. I think it was the CIA. I think his fridge exploded, but his fridge has exploded. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, exploded. <laughs> What month is it? <laughs> Sonic weapons. Uh, the, the, so, Ice. Uh, so the, the, the April. Also, <laughs> April. <laughs> there's also That's an, my new catchphrase. An earlier gun. An earlier gun. There's an earlier Everyone's time. Uh, there's a, well, this is also isn't a conspiracy. This is a true story. Uh, born to a family of villagers not far the from. The gun was. No, yes. Uh, <laughs> this no. is my baby M17. This, this is the story of a Russian assassin. Um, who used uh, his own uh, untraceable gun many times. Um, so, born to a family of villagers not far from Lviv, uh, Bodan, Stashinsky completed his early education in 1948 and studied to become a teacher at Studied Liv- to become an assassin. Studied to become a totally badass gunman. <laughs> uh, <at> the- <laughs> it's on his resume. That's all totally it says. badass gunman. <laughs> at the uh. Lviv Pedagogical Institute, Stashinsky's family were supporters of the anti-Soviet Ukraine insurgent army UPA. Uh, UPA. <laughs> <Oopa! laughs> his, oh, yes, <laughs> his three sisters were members of the organization. In 1950, he was arrested for traveling without a ticket or public transport to Lviv from his village. After he gr- got arrested for that. Fuck. Yes. When you just go, no, that's £3.75. No, that's handcuffs. <laughs> well, that's basically like. Um, Fucking, is that like the last of us? Like, you're not supposed to be in this region of the city or village. Here's handcuffs. Well, it was <laughs> it was sort of like that with um, with a lot of people who had to travel when the coronavirus lockdown happened. Yeah. And people were trying to travel. It's like, you're going to a place where you know people. I got, got handcuffs. <laughs> and death. <laughs> <laughs> and 14 days in somewhere that you don't know with other people who are potentially infected. In handcuffs. Uh, I mean infected. <laughs> uh, in straight jacket. I mean, I mean, free range. I mean, uh, uh, ice gun. Get in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, after agreeing to act as an informer, he was released. Through his sisters, he infiltrated the workings of the UPA and forwarded information to the MGB. He literally went through them. I assume the MGB is an earlier version of the KGB? Maybe. Uh, in 1953, he was sent to Kiev uh, to continue studies in espionage. In 1954, he was sent to East Germany under the name Josef Lehmann. I like to Lehmann? think of a little Lehmann? class when you say like he goes to learn espionage. It's sort of just like a little <laughs> class and he goes... Today we learn how to get in Pentagon. Now it is invisible currently, and it is in ocean, but <laughs> we will find it. Where there are shapes, we will find them. <laughs> uh, mirrors don't confuse us; we confuse mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> so East Germany, under the name of Josef Lehmann or Lehmann. Uh, where he perfected his knowledge of German. In 1956, he often travelled to Munich, where he began to perfect his false identity. So what year is this? This is this is after the First World War, or the Second? Yes, yeah, so we're now in 1956. He, oh, okay. Has, okay. he has trained, essentially, to be an assassin, and he has taught himself the ways of the Germany, essentially. Yeah. Uh, St- Stashinsky received the instructions to carry out the assassination directly from the headquarters of the KGB in Moscow. At the, the time... MGB. Uh, well, now it says the KGB. Oh, so, so oh, they've had a branding. They've had rebranded. <laughs> rebranded. Uh, well, we're loving it. Uh, this <laughs> <laughs> Just McDonald's starts suing the KGB. Uh, at the time, Alexander Sheplin was uh, chairman of the Committee for the State of Security of the Council of Ministers. The assassination was known to and approved by the chairman of the Council of Ministers of the USSR, Nikita Khrushchev. Khrushchev? Khrushchev. Nikita Khrushchev. Nikita Khrushchev reporting for presidency. In 1957, the KGB trained the 25-year-old Stashinsky to use a spray gun that fired a jet of poison gas from the crushed cyanide capsule. Not fucking obvious, really. So basically, there's actually a superhero that has a gas gun. Uh, Is he a hero? Or... 
Uh, it's uh, the Green Hornet he uses a gas gun. Oh, I thought, you, I thought you meant he was the hero. I thought you were saying, <laughs> no! like, here we have a hero with but a gas gun. I think that's where they got the idea for the gas gun and things oh. like that. Because <laughs> obviously he's using like a neurotoxin, whereas Green Hornet would just knock people out with it. So. Yeah, I love the <laughs> idea of people like... People. It, it was supposed to be non-lethal, so he didn't have to punch the lights out, essentially. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I think they got mixed up on the way of making the real one. <laughs> like, I like the idea of just having these really super powerful people just bringing in a comic book and going, make this. <laughs> I want gas gun. You know that Superman? No, no, no. It just points to mm. mind him. It's just like Cyborg. <laughs> make. You make. <laughs> make. Or spray like Holly Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, that's me. <laughs> Fired a jet of poison gas from a crushed cyanide capsule. The gas was designed to induce a cardiac arrest, making the victim's death look like a heart attack. Uh, Stashinsky used the weapon to kill Lev Rebe in 1957. On 15th of October 1959, he used an improved version of the same gas gun to assassinate Stepan Vandera in Munich. It now has a scope. <laughs> Stashinsky was honoured by Moscow with the Order of the Red Banner by Shelepin uh, for his work, given his final assignment to kill Yoroslav Stetsko. Stetsko, also living in Munich, was a prominent anti-Soviet Ukrainian nationalist leader and also the president of the anti-Bolshevik bloc of nations. So he's about to say anti-Bolshevik. <laughs> he was to be assassinated in 1960, but it could not be uh, perpetrated for reasons which have not been clarified. Fucking hell. So his uh, career, Stashinsky's career, seems to have come to a, a bit of an abrupt end in the 1960s. and didn't When really... he accidentally gassed himself. Didn't really hear again from him after that, which, when it comes to Russia... And assassins. You kind of I think Stashinsky got stashinsky <laughs> <laughs> Um... Like the thing is, when when you when you ask if you if you were to put two 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 weapons on the table, how I'm imagining it, how I'm imagining it in my mind, you go, you've got this gun that shoots a little pew of ice and it just goes in, blech, or you've got to literally walk up within like five feet of someone, spray them with gas, walk away, then they die, and you go. I had nothing to do with it. Uh, like I'm obviously gonna go with a little ice gun because in my head I'm well, just the, the ice gun. Ice gun gives you range. It gives you proper range. But if no one's about to see you, if it's only you and the victim, and you've got enough time to do that Spray them. and get out of the way, no one sees you. Yeah. If they die quick enough. Then the gas gun, I would have both. I'd have the gas gun in case I'm, I'm accidentally like, oh, fuck, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm run. Yeah. But I'd have the ice gun in case I was like, ah, it would be very got a awkward moment. It would be very awkward if you had the ice gun and you have like a target in like Dubai or something and it's just really hot. And as soon as it like goes through the air, it goes, <laughs> and just melts as it goes towards him. It just <laughs> becomes that, like a splatter. Or you're in like fucking Scotland or something. You go to fire the ice gun and you've got the gas gun. It's, <laughs> it's straight into your face. It's, no! <laughs> I've been shinskied. <laughs> I've to shinskied myself. <laughs> oh, shinsky. And the final one for three real three fake secret UK bacteria trials. So they were gassing people in Britain as well in the 40s to 80s as well. Shinskied, if you might say. Well, I don't know if this is gas or if it's bacteria. It's probably more like a mist. <laughs> oh, uh, a light mist. A light mist. I prefer misting. that to, a, to a, an aimed <laughs> gas. You know what I mean? Mm, mm, mm. Tastes like. E. Yes. coli. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Is that the plague? Not again. <laughs> <laughs> I've already had it three times this week. Fuck. So this story comes from The, the Guardian. UK. Writ uh, well, the UK, yes. <laughs> uh, from The Guardian, written by Anthony Barnett uh, on the 21st of April 2002. So this is a bit of an old, old story. Yeah. As most of them are. By old, I mean 18 years. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, God. Oh, or God, do I'm I mean on. 318 years? Oh, 318. Years. <laughs> oh, silly, stupid, <laughs> fucking Howard. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it would still be... It would still be 18. Because we'd be shit. back in time as well. Technically. Back in time. Sorry. Does that mean I get to read... Oh, God, I don't want to have to redo secondary school. <laughs> Not again. Oh, God. 
<laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, a government report just released 18 years ago provides for the first time a comprehensive... <laughs> <laughs> a comprehensive official history of Britain's biological weapons trials between 1940 and 1979. The headline lied to me. <laughs> 1980. That clearly says 1979. Uh, well, I didn't even <laughs> just scrape the barrel of the 80s. May 1st! Many of them... <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, most of it happened in April, so technically, <laughs> all of it happened in April. <laughs> oh. uh, many of these tests involved releasing potentially dangerous chemicals and microorganisms. Because why would they be mm, helpful? My why would, favorite. Why would they ever want to spray helpful ones? You know, we've got this bacteria <laughs> that actually just helps your immune system. Here's and... some entirely benign and safe bacteria sprayed all over your face. Oh, by the way, we lied. It's actually just salmonella. It's dangerous and tiny things that will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> There's little people in you now. Um, uh, See, so microorganisms over vast swaths of the population without the public ever being told. It's just it's, it's <clears throat> the usual, isn't it, really? Well, uh, no. <laughs> it shouldn't be <laughs> It shouldn't be, but it fucking well, it is, is. Uh, While details of some secret trials have emerged in recent years The 60% 60% The 60 page report reveals new information <laughs> But more than 100 covert experiments The report reveals that the military personnel were briefed to tell any inquisitive inquirer The trials were to part fuck of off. To get the fuck out of Dodge <laughs> <laughs> or you'll kick them in the tits. You can get shin skied. <laughs> or you'll get shin skied. <laughs> the trials were part of research projects. They were told to tell people there were research projects into weather and air pollution and how to pollute the, the air, <laughs> essentially. What? So we're spraying <laughs> down here to affect up there. Like... We're experimenting with the weather, said an evil genius. <laughs> so open your mouth. <laughs> uh, the tests carried out by government scientists at Port and Down were designed to help the MOD assess Britain's... Lack of death. <laughs> Why aren't people dying enough? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's speed it up. Go on. <clears throat> they were designed to help the MOD assess Britain's vulnerability if the Russians were to have released clouds God, of deadly germs over the country. Me. It's always it's fine. the Russians. We're doing it because the... Would you rather... A little bit of E. coli, or would you rather some Russians came over here and said, duh. Well, it's better if we give it to you than them. Yeah. You don't want Russian E. coli. Oh, look, see, he you died. You want G good old Britain. British E. coli. British e. coli. <laughs> Do we know where to cure it? Yeah, probably by the time it... Shut yeah. up and eat these prions. <laughs> <laughs> Take your meds. <laughs> It's always the Russians. Oh, no, it's like, like we get in our own heads about what the Russians. The government are doing. does something slightly wrong. It's like the Russians. Russia gate. Russia. 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 <laughs> ah. I stubbed my toe on this door. The Russians God. obviously changed the axis Russia. of the globe. It's that picture of the kid on his bike and he just and puts he the a stick in his spokes. God damn Russians! <laughs> 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 you know. the, t the tests were carried out by government scientists upon down to Lidl From Russia. From Russia. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> oh, God. In most cases, the trials did not use biological weapons, but alternatives, which scientists believed would mimic germ warfare. So we didn't use real biological weapons. We just used faux biological weapons with a little bit of, a little bit of bad stuff in there. Black it was heroin. It was just fireworks, There's a basically. Bit of cocaine in there. It was just fireworks. We shoved a bit of meat produce in there. We ground it all up so it's more like a mist. But if you ingest it, we ground it up so no one could tell it was humans. It is April. Well, you all complain <laughs> that you want to get older, so now we're doing it. <laughs> Your lungs look eighty. Oh, they're brilliant. Oh, and you look jealous. Love, love the bags under your eyes, Carol. <laughs> Happy thirteenth birthday. <laughs> sake uh, da, 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 da. oh so they, they would believe they would mimic germ warfare in which the mod claimed were harmless see i want to just i want to imagine that this is like russian uh scientists coming in trying to do like a northern accent so like yeah think tetley t da will do <laughs> spray fake germ we are doing very well uh to combat the uh, ter russians to uh, do spray I now. have them eating out of the palm of my butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the saying goes, right? It's 
surprising. <laughs> I am British te man from te internet. Internet not around yet. Don't ignore what, me. What up, Chuck? <laughs> <laughs> Calm uh, down. Um, eh. But families in certain areas of the country who have children with birth defects are demanding a public inquiry. Uh, one chapter of the report, the fluorescent particle trials. Fluorescent particle trials? Jesus Christ. Ah! Just walking down the street at night and all you see is these little <clears throat> particles. Oh, that's how high I am right now. Oh, thank God it's not the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see my insides. It appears to be raining small shards of glass. Ow, ow, <laughs> ow. For the, thank God it's not the... Ow, Russian, ow. <laughs> what did it say on the shard of glass? I'm oh, made in the UK. Oh, glad I lost my eye to this one. <laughs> Uh, uh, reveals uh, how between 1955 and 1963 planes flew from northeast England to the tip of Cornwall along the south of the west coasts, dropping huge amounts of zinc, cadmium sulphide on the population. Oh, sounds healthy. Sounds like biscuits and cheese to me. Just like sticky tongue out, it starts burning, going, oh, mm, mm. spicy rain. Spicy meatball. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that why, would probably kill you from that Why are the meatballs coming from the sky? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we drop meatball to sort of make it more yay instead of nay. <laughs> what a <jam> um, <laughs> the, uh, the chemical drifted miles inland, its fluorescence allowing the uh, spread to be monitored. Uh, in another trial using zinc cadmium sulfide, a generator was towed along a road near from in Somerset where it spewed the chemical for an hour. Jesus, <laughs> my God! What you know? We've um, got the sky covered. What do we do next? Tie this generator to the back of a truck and just shit it everywhere. So we <laughs> fucked the ninety-five percent. Now, how do we do the other five? Got ideas, people? Ideas? Well, you've you've got to get them right in the face. Gotcha. <laughs> Why is everybody else in this room dead? What? Oh. <laughs> Great meeting, guys. <laughs> Somebody just comes in with the tea and goes, Oh, I guess you won't be leading these anymore. It just immediately collapses. <laughs> <laughs> Every time anyone comes near the door, oh, oh God, what's happening here? Better call the police. <laughs> the police arrive. Uh, we're here to investigate. We're going to need back. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Sorry, you're going to need back rubs. And he goes, We're sending them now. And just people with like. <laughs> Send a bunch of masseuses just. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need a morgue to clean up these bodies. There's a lot of them, so send many people. <laughs> Jesus, we can barely get in the building. <laughs> Just so you know, that was a lot of people dying, so that isn't funny. If you left, you are going to hell. <coughs> yeah, this is a terrible story. Or bollog, naze, maze, whatever the fuck. <laughs> Bollock, so amazing. Tired. Fuck this. Uh, <laughs> while, the, while the government has insisted the chemical is safe, cadmium is recognised as a cause of lung cancer and during the Second World War was considered by the Allies as a chemical weapon. In another chapter... Or if you think about it in the British <clears throat> government sort of way, it's great as a side with eggs and, and <laughs> toast in the morning. And your oxygen in the morning and your oxygen in the evening, oxygen in the afternoon... It's great all the time. You for were everything. all saying that life is getting too easy, so we just added an extra difficulty level. We just put a bit of cadmium in there for you. And everyone just went off. <laughs> it just went off. <laughs> <laughs> His lungs just went off. Or came out, you know. How they're not they supposed just came to do out. that. They sort of bypassed the rest <clears throat> of your organs and came out the the wrong end. Which sends the right end for your lungs to fall out of. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> In another chapter, large area coverage trials, the MOD describes how between 1961 and 1968, uh, more than a million people along the southwest west, along the southwest coast uh, had signed up <laughs> along the south coast of England. Um, from Torquay to the New Forest, were exposed to bacteria, including E. coli. Uh, Ding, ding, ding. Clearly, my favourite bacteria. <laughs> um, the uh, and bis, uh, this is this is going on. And bis, <laughs> this is going on. And this is happening. And bur. you can just bur, call it bur. and Bacillus glo, glibigii, glibigii, which mimics hey. anthrax. 
Yay! Yay! Death. <laughs> oh fuck! Oh, Jesus! No, you put the wrong ones in. We said we wanted the common cold. Oh, why the fuck have you put Bacillus globigula in here? I wanted anthrax. That's my E. <laughs> coli. Uh, oh, oh, you dropped God. it all over Dorset. You dropped it all over Doris. <laughs> in Dorset, <laughs> just her. I'm dying. <laughs> wrong country. Get back to Wales. <laughs> You can't tell me what borders not to cross. <laughs> we can with chemicals. We can. Now stop. Oh, where was I? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Doris is thinking. <laughs> where was I? Why aren't I in Wales anymore? <laughs> and, and why I am I covered in anthrax? <laughs> <laughs> I Dorset. Can, I can barely breathe. April. <laughs> <laughs> April. <laughs> why have I turned into a 22-year-old man? Gascon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Oh dear. Uh, these releases came from a military ship, the Ice Whale, anchored off of Dorset, uh, which sprayed the microorganisms in a five to ten mile radius. Good news, everyone! <laughs> You're all infected. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of people are complaining in the world today that people aren't taking the time to get to know each other because they don't have anything in common. Now, this, this... Well, you're so, all infected by... <laughs> you have E. coli. <laughs> oh, so do I. Oh, man. I, just, I can't wait to get to know... It's oh, in it our genes. Dead. No, no. They put it in our genes. <laughs> it's in my genes. Would you like some? Slowly seeping into my skin. <laughs> Pocket E. coli. <laughs> just starts throwing it at people. Yeah, big kids just having E. coli fights in the street. Just like... <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha, you've got E. coli. Ha ha, you've got E. coli, bitch. <laughs> a mm. new strain. That's how scientists fight. That's how science works. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, completely. This is my new theory. <clears throat> the report also reveals details of the DICE trials in South Dorset between 1971 and 75. These involved uh, US and UK military scientists. Here we go. Here they are. Yay! US have come over to play. Yay, and ruin our day. And what are they spraying? Dare. Massive quantities of serratia, Mars essence bacteria. Marzipan bacteria. <laughs> With an anthrax simulant. Yay! And phenol. Yay! <laughs> that does what? It's just a mixture of shit that'll kill you. <laughs> Just what I love in the morning. Oh, here comes the anthrax cloud. Oh, God. What a beautiful sight. Similar bacteria were released in the sabotage, sabotage trials between 1952 and 1964. These were tests... You know, the worst time of life. <laughs> Uh, these were tests to determine the vulnerability of large government buildings and public transport to attack. You know, we'll test the we'll test the country's vulnerability by seeing how vulnerable people are to death, like Sh literal uh, death. Should we should we see uh, what happens if we drive this bus at a brick wall at forty miles an hour? No, no, no. We should blast it with E. coli and phenon, and then phenon, drive it sorry. into a wall, just and then to, drive just it to see what happens. I mean, we might as well. And We've this got is the, the test. No, no, people are inside. Well, no, we already bought the wall. This is the forty-two to the wall. We, we already bought the wall. We, these people all signed up for what they thought was going to be a fun bus ride, but they didn't read the fine print. It's a stress trial. See how fucking stressed they are when they're in hospital. <laughs> to see how stressed they are when they're being sprayed with anthrax. And sprayed with a wall. Uh... <laughs> Great job, everyone. We'll clean this up tomorrow. Oh, we forgot. In 1956, bacteria <laughs> were released into the London underground at lunchtime, along with Northern Line between Collier's Wood and Tooting Broadway. The results show that the organism dispersed about 10 miles. Just... Mm, <laughs> similar, the piss smells different today. Similar tests were conducted in tunnels running underneath government buildings in Whitehall. So basically, if you... Lived in the UK. In, in 1956, if you took the London underground... At lunchtime, you... In April. ...were sprayed with chemicals. So... But only in April. Yeah, only in April. Congrats on oh, that one. No, I think that I'm not sure when. Just in general in 1956. In if you were uh, existed in 1956 in London, you were probably experimented on. Yeah. Have fun with that one. I mean, if you're around... <clears> what, what's, to, what's today? Like, if you're around in August 2020, you are probably also being experimented on. 
by someone and it will it's come just, out nowadays they tend to do it with fucking psycholo- psychology and marketing and yeah all the good stuff cigarettes are good again <laughs> experiments conduct Conducted experiments conducted between 1964 and 1973 involved attaching germs to threads of spiders' webs in boxes. <laughs> I was going to say attaching germs to strings and then just throwing them. You catch! I got it. What is it? E. coli. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Just running off. Uh, so yeah, so uh, spiders' webs in boxes to test how the germs would survive in different environments. But what environment we're we testing today? Spiders. It's still That's in the not UK. An environment. It's still in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> God. Uh. <laughs> These tests were carried out in dozens of locations across the country, including London's West End, Southampton, and Swindon. The report also gives details of more than a dozen smaller trials, field trials between 1968 and 1977. In recent years, the MOD has commissioned 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 two scientists to review the safety of these tests both reported that there was well no... they fucking failed on that one didn't they <laughs> oh yes yeah, so go ahead anthrax in the in the air anthrax perfectly fine uh both reported of course there was no risk to public health although one suggested <laughs> that the uh the elderly or people suffering from breathing illnesses may have been seriously harmed if they inhaled sufficient quantities of microorganisms where have you heard that before hmm nowhere Coronavirus? No, no, it only affects old people with breathing issues. Yeah. Uh, and they'll only be caused if they uh, inhale sufficient quantities of the microorganisms. Is this a conspiracy? I'm sorry, what do you mean a 21-year-old has died? Uh... <laughs> yeah, that sort of hit everyone hard when that like yeah. came out. There was just like uh, young... Because like, it, was, it was all like the rhetoric was the whole... Um, it's people who have underlying health issues. It's older people. It's people with breathing problems You're already. perfectly fine. Herd immunity, go outside. And then it's just <laughs> Lick like... Lick your friends. Oh, a 21-year-old gym instructor died. Oh, shit, panic, panic, oh, God, panic. Nobody, nobody, everyone stop licking each other. <laughs> stop coughing in each other's mouth. But Fridays! <laughs> But for- <laughs> <laughs> However, some families in the areas uh, which bore the bl- uh, brunt of the secret tests are convinced the experiments have led to their children suffering birth defects, physical handicaps, and learning difficulties. Bro, that extra foot on your head looks fucking fine. Get over it. A third arm on your back, I call that useful. Um, <sighs> uh, Abolish Parliament. <laughs> Abolish things. Just do it now. Just do it now. You might as well. Uh, what? Yes. Fire is the only answer. It started with it, it will end Fire with it. Fire and blood sacrifices. Is it April yet? <laughs> Please. I mean, it starts with an A. We could just go, oh, April. It's a okay, April. <laughs> David Orman, uh, an army officer from Bournemouth, is demanding a public inquiry. His wife, Jeanette, was born in East Lulworth in Dorset, close to where many of the trials took place. She had a miscarriage, then gave birth to a son with cerebral palsy. Uh, Janet's three Janet's three sisters, also born in the village while the tests were being carried out, have also given to birth to children with unexplained problems. Also, have a number of their neighbours. So, I think you can you can kind of knock out the idea that it's uh, genetic genetic that it's more likely to be uh, an external. I just you know <clears throat> it just baffles me the fact that it may it, there's there's a very like small minuscule chance that it could have been. The lethal toxins that they sprayed into the air. No, no, no. The 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 scientists, the scientist people, men. They did a they did a they did a test. They did a thing yeah, where they they, they, you... uh, they licked the soil or something. Oh, and they said it's 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 it was only harmful to old people who were dead and stuff. You've been drinking <laughs> almond milk. Well, that's probably the problem. You change your diet. See, it's nothing to do with the anthrax that's covering your lungs. Just ignore that. We're just going to move on. We all know anthrax is perfectly fine. Urbrex. I love that band. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually a band called Anthrax. Is there a- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's uh, all their fault. It's my favourite stuff. <laughs> what? Stop giving Anthrax a bad name. Oh. <laughs> I drink it. <laughs> the local health authority, so these, this, the way that these women live, the local health authority has denied that there is a cluster, but Orman believes otherwise. He said, I'm convinced something terrible has happened. The village was a close-knit community, and to have so many birth defects over such a short space of time has to be more than a coincidence. Successive governments have tried to keep details of the germ warfare tests a secret, while reports of a number of the trials have emerged over the years through Public Records Office. This latest MOD document, which was released to Liberal Democrat MP Norman Baker, gives the fullest official version of the biological warfare trials yet. 
Uh, so, I mean, uh, not too long like left. you would actually come out and go, yeah, we actually did just fuck you over, like, completely. Yeah. yeah. Just um, have fun dealing with that child that now you're going to have to... Well, it, it sounds like they've been... to look after them, it, like, poor it, sods as it well. It sounds like more and more information has slowly been leaked over the years. And each government, whether they're on the right or left, that have taken come to power have basically done everything they can to minimise the amount of information that got out and to poo-poo any kind of uh, concern uh, that people have with it, essentially. They're, they're doing the thing where they're going to deny it up until the point where it's undeniable, and then they'll go, ah, bad. Well, it's like it's a, it's like the tactic when you get pulled over, you you uh, admit to, like, a huge crime instead of the one that you're currently in. So you just, or, or it's the opposite way around. You do, you admit to, like, something else or something, or they go, like, so uh, you, you actually sprayed... The, the plague at people. No, it was just it was just eco light. I'm like, oh, that, oh, okay, that's okay then. We'll yeah, it on. was it was just like dummy things. It was just p- pretend things that weren't. They were, they were just supposed to mimic anthrax. Um, by any chance, did the thing you used to mimic anthrax was it by was it anthrax? It, there's there's a possibility. Mm, there's that a possibility. At least ninety nine percent of it probably was, but the one percent. Pro- we wasn't. tried. We tried to make it lettuce, <laughs> ground up lettuce. It didn't work as well because no one reacted. So everyone just to, ate the lettuce to get the reaction we wanted. <laughs> we used the thing that we wanted and just fucked you over. So we just we just simulated an anthrax attack, attack with simulated anthrax. How do you simulate anthrax? Uh, with anthrax, real anthrax. <laughs> My <sighs> God. And so if if you trusted the government before this, uh, welcome to reality. Well, this is when, when you hear of, I think, recently, I haven't watched it yet, but I think based on the new series, the, the Watchmen series, uh, that talks about um, the American, America's government uh, essentially using attacks on civilian populations uh, coordinated by the US government to make it appear as though an external threat is happening has been done several times in america and they're not conspiracies there we know about them uh, and they've since come up <clears throat> every country has done it this is england's admittedly england's is a lot less <sighs> i wouldn't say it's, it's more underhanded <laughs> it's more underhanded and it, it doesn't target specific communities the ones in america specifically to, like the one that deals with the watchman was targeted uh, african-american uh, group of people like th- this was this was kind of it's terrible and it's morally disgusting but at the same time they didn't discriminate against who they test they didn't give a shit they, you get they anthrax. fucking tested you, you get anthrax. Anthrax. everybody gets an anthrax <laughs> <laughs> they Apart do, yeah. from the people up north because we need them <clears throat> to think the idea that the the government wouldn't do this uh uh, and, and I think George Carlin probably said it the best where he, he says, if you think you have rights, you don't have rights. Uh, you have a temporary set of privileges because uh, rights aren't rights when someone can take them away and the government does it to you constantly. Yep. You have privileges until the government decides otherwise. You don't have any rights. The idea of rights is a fallacy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you've had it recently with those uh, coronavirus parties that those influencers were having. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, LA is just like, yeah, we have the power to shut your water and electric off. Like, what? Just come just come and arrest me rather yeah, than arrest cutting them. off my essential... If they, if they do get COVID, what do they need? Mm, heat and water. Plebs. We'll take that away from you because yes. you did the bad. Yes, yes, they're stupid cunts, but you don't just go, we'll just kill them. Yeah. It'll be fine. We'll just kill them. They just went off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. Man. So, Norman Baker, the guy who got this MOD document, he said, I welcome the fact that the government has finally released this information, but question why it has taken so long. It's unacceptable that the public were treated as guinea pigs without their knowledge, and I want to be sure that the Ministry of Defence's claims that these chemicals and bacteria used were safe is true. The MOD report traces the history of the UK's research into germ warfare since the Second World War, when Porton Down produced five million cattle cakes filled with deadly anthrax spores, which would have been dropped in Germany to kill their livestock. It also gives details of the infamous anthrax experiments on Grunard on the Scottish coast, I think it's a little island, which left the island, yeah, uh, so contaminated it couldn't be inhabited until the late 1980s. Gee. <laughs> like, uh, aren't we just nice to each other? You know what I mean? Aren't we, aren't yeah. we just so nice? Well, it's like for forever, like, I, 
chemtrails, which is a thing that for the longest time as a conspiracy theory, I laughed at people for. Immediately after reading this story, I've gone, oh, fuck, no, yeah, they could be doing that any time and they're just lying to us. Oh, yeah. The, oh, yeah. Now I have to, any time, after reading this story, any time someone's like, chemtrails and, and like, uh, they're spraying chemicals. It doesn't matter whether they're, like, whether they're saying, like, chemtrails or contrails. They can get that wrong all day, every day. Yeah. That's not the point. The fact that... Oh, I thought you just made a mistake then. I thought you went, uh, yeah, do no, you mean chemtrails? Uh, well, this is what I mean. They say chemtrails and you look at it and oftentimes it is a contrail. You can tell the difference between a contrail, like a contrail, like you look at it and you know, that's a contrail or this is a chemtrail. But I poo-pooed it to the point where I thought it was so stupid that the idea that the government would spray actual chemicals like uh, and do tests like this would be so stupid that I laughed at the idea of um, uh, chemtrails completely off. Whereas now I'm going, all right, I can, I can use my knowledge of what contrails and things are to dispute that but when it comes to the fact that it's like it doesn't matter ignore that entirely the fact that they could be spraying chemicals and the fact that they have in the past and they lied about it and they're still trying to lie to it about it to this day it's like yeah no they're probably doing it yeah. <laughs> they're oh, probably still oh, doing it oh god yeah yep the aluminum in the air wouldn't surprise me aluminium illuminati sorry. in the air <laughs> illuminati all up in that sky um, but, but, but the report also confirms the use of anthrax and other deadly germs on tests aboard ships in the Caribbean and off the Scottish coast during the 1950s. The document states tacit approval for stimulant trials where the public might be exposed was strongly influenced by defence security considerations aimed obviously at restricting public knowledge. An important cor uh, cor coronavirus. Cor corollary. Uh, to this was the need to avoid public alarm and disquiet about the vulnerability of the civil population to biological warfare attacks. Sue Ellison, spokeswoman for Port and Down, which is the government facility where they essentially developed all these chemicals and planned how they were going to spray them on on people unwilling unwitting and unwilling people independent reports by eminent scientists have shown there was no danger to public health from these releases which were carried out to protect the public oh great I'm, I'm have you ever heard anything us. so fucking orwellian the results from these trials will save lives should the country or our forces face an attack by a chemical and biological weapons asked whether the such tests should still be carried out she said it's not our policy to discuss ongoing research <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of that thing that we were just talking about for like five minutes where it's probably still happening probably still happening it's probably still happening it's probably happening <laughs> no, right now not probably is 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 she's literally saying we're not going to discover ongoing research so you mean the fact that you're spray you're still spraying chemicals you're doing it uh, great wonderful uh, thanks for letting me know though sources for that are from the guardian and um and another little website which i can't remember what that is but chemtrails it's in the link no. so you can look at it <laughs> <laughs> um and that's it for Theory Real, Theory Fake. We've run on far too long. We have. We've run on far too long. I, th I think that'll be it for this part. So we'll be back for part two. Um, you can check out all the links for everything that we've spoken about today at cluelessinter.net if the description of your podcasting app choice is shit i'm looking at you spotify every single time i'm looking at you you spent 100 million on joe rogan fix your descriptions it's not hard um you can follow us on twitter at clueless net you can email us at podcast at clueless into dot net join our discord server and check out our youtube channel links for those will also be in the description uh we also stream over on twitch.tv forward slash clueless internet and we'll be back with part two uh next time right now right now i bet say we are we are literally about to record it right now but you'll hear it uh, at a later date so thank you very much for listening and we'll see you then adios bye It's just a bunch of bad shit happened in April on certain years. That means April bad. April, yeah. No, I get it. I, <laughs> I mean, it. how can you refute that? I totally April get it. bad. Bro, I tell uh, Orange man. Orange man bad. <laughs> Orange man voted in in April. <laughs> Plus a few months. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs>